saona podvozi my brother unja no no mpela ngoma sawa ngozi mpetu oh amen hallelujah hey, tada so a few housekeeping rules no not housekeeping actually a, f- a few complaints from my side sure no is it complaints no thank you so much for coming through <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i appreciate that you're a very busy man i think this is what people say officially um because we we are meant to have this sit down since last year that's right. initially on the hustlers corner with dj spoo that's right um and then you told me that you're kind of in and out the country which i hope you'll speak to us about um and then we were meant to sit here on the panel show and this is the third attempt that's third right. time lucky sure i thought it was never gonna happen even today i'm like as this did i need diva and he's not coming and i was starting to get annoyed i'm like is this guy trying to send a message with the fuck this panel guy actually so some of my most watch videos on my channel penuel the black pen mention you i know the first one being the one where i was dragging you on your voice i'm well aware uh, i remember I you i remember you posted it and you were laughing uh and i was like you know if we see timber why you speak like this this is this is this is like early day pen I very early that. still well i'm still crusty but crustier than this yeah, 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 yeah. um i'm i'm glad that you took it in good spirit and two other videos were the ones where you and you said oh more go at each other on twitter which i'm i'm hoping to cover yeah, we'll at some points as well but sure. more than anything i hope in the way i've spoken about you that you realize i'm a huge fan a lot of us even the people that claim to be your haters constantly watching constantly listening mm. um so thank you for coming through uh, i'm annoyed that you are diva and you're busy but i'm happy that you're here and it makes me so happy and i'm hoping <laughs> So me during our conversation your accent will slip and go for me is what v yeah yes where is the accent now vusi welcome no i'm blessed so le- so let me say the following right so um i always say to people like there is nothing extraordinary about me except that i was raised to believe i'm extraordinary yeah so when i see people who have the same inclination i'm immediately drawn to them So when I first saw your video all those years back and I, and I'm not I'm not like buying your face with this and I'll tell you why this is important when I first saw that video the content was crap but the caliber of the character I was like this guy's going to go somewhere thanks bro and and it's proven that right and and here's why that's important I think it took me a long time to mature into the space of understanding that ovo sang mazio mm Yes. People have an avatar of who they think I am. Sure. Right? They they extract from the minor interactions with me who they think of was the is. And you know, um the systems one systems two thinking. We love putting people in boxes we've already framed. Mm. So somebody has framed a box, you talk a certain way, you dress a certain way, they're like, "Ungenala." And that's who you are now. Yeah. And you can never live outside of that box. And what I've enjoyed about your journey and the reason why of all of the platforms in SA that have been asking me to come on and it's all of them I can imagine each and every single one I can them. imagine yours is the only conversation I took yours is the only call I took was because I know that you are in a space where you can have a reflect conversation without deflecting that's rare not a lot of people can do that that means a lot to me so love man coming from you thanks a lot bro My my concern with what you're saying is you know when people become celebrities or to what you're saying an avatar you live in a cage and a prison and you almost cannot be yourself yeah yeah do you never struggle with that because like i said obviously i'm joke i we laugh at how you speak and sure, stuff sure sure do you never feel like you have to constantly look a certain way like your brand mm-hmm. and you can never break out of character and just be vulnerable i mean i talk shit i know sometimes you swear now and now and again it's very rare but generally you you very well kept and polished do you never struggle with this thing psychologically where you find like you're fighting the brand versus yourself i used to not anymore um and the reason is you know if you ever read my tweets they signed vt yeah that ain't me i work for vt i'm not vt yeah vt goes to work he has a mandate things he's got to deliver and do yeah and i work for him and when i show up for work mm. i do that let me get put it to you another way so you know i'm a you know i invest in like different companies and sure. ceo of a venture firm right and the other day i was having this conversation with my rabbi and i said to him this is interesting 
when we are looking for people to hire, we say we have a role. Yes. Isn't that what Hollywood calls actors? 100%. In other words, when I hire Panvel, I need him to play a role. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking him to be himself. Sure. Does that make sense? Sure. So for me, that conflict was divorced when I realized that actually every single day, all of us are playing a role. If we taxi driver, you play a role. It's a fact. There are things you have to do to survive as a taxi driver. If, you, if you're in Gatolis, if, no, no, you know, if you're a cashier mm -hmm. at a pick and pay, or you are an administrator at a home affairs office, you play a role. Yeah. There are things you have to do to be effective at that. And so in my mind, I kind of went, these are just the things I have to do mm. to be effective at this. I happen to be good at doing those things. Doing those things is not who I am. It's something I'm doing. Mm. And once I was able to divorce those two things, oh man, it was all chilled. Until then, it was huge conflict. I will tell you this because you'll understand it. It was huge conflict because I didn't understand why I was hated by people I admired. Sure. I was like, how the fuck does that work? Yeah. Like, I love my people. I love my people. Yeah. Why would I be hated by the people I admire? Why would I be hated by people I want to spend time with? Mm. You know, there are videos of mine that circulate on social media. People don't believe when I tell them. Menangai V12 chief, whichever one that's in the garage at the time, is Kia and go look for his sport, is a god. It's my thing. Sure. My kids will tell you, like, dad, don't mess with him. Sure. Right? I'm like, y'all do sushi. <laughs> I mean, I go on Mr. <laughs> Ding Tang Yukoda. I'm that guy. Sure. And if they deliver it and it's got that lettuce, we're going to have a problem. There should be no lettuce. Sure. Go God. Do you understand? Like, keep lettuce the fuck out of it. Yeah. In Gena, lettuce, go God. That's, that's me. So I, I know who I am. I know where I come from. I love that. Mm. And I'm plugged into that. And then I didn't understand when or how, for whatever reason, the people who in the main, not completely, but some of the people in that space didn't identify with me anymore. Yeah. That was, that was a tough, rough couple of years, man. So the part you're saying about a role reminds me of a, a Kanye West clip. I don't know what talk show he was on. And he was saying young children have got all these huge dreams. Yeah. And when a child jumps on a coffee table mm. and they want to fly because they're Superman, someone will say, teach your child how to act. Yes. And he was saying, we're all actors and we need to break through the simulation. Beautiful. Um, so it, it, it ties in with that, which is very powerful and it's real. Look, we're all born blank canvases and over time we are put into roles and you almost get imprisoned. If you're a taxi driver and you want to be yourself, the passengers who are used to other taxi drivers who act will teach you. Absolutely. Why are you opening the door for us? Why are you saying, yes, ma'am, yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. like this, And then you almost get forced. Mm. My fear when I study human beings is I, I think a big part of what's causing mental illnesses and depression today mm. Mm. is so many people conflicted in, our, in, in their heads around who they want to be. Yes, sir. Who they're supposed to be. And at some point, because I've got this... I've got this imagination of a board of directors being your ancestors in your head, <laughs> and they're always bickering because <laughs> <laughs> they want to dominate, right? And that's, that's who your personality takes after. And Ukoko Wak is like head Ukoko of the like, risk hey. and audit committee. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they don't stop. Don't say that, Penyo! Now I'm going to find those stars. But now I you've got that. that board of directors in your head, which is your your ancestors and your genetics you were born with. Mm. And now you're introducing new data. Number mm. one, you're speaking a language they don't understand. Mm. What's mm. that in mm. mind? And number two, you're in a space where mm. 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 you're trying to behave in a way that even they don't understand. And that becomes the conflict mm. of them inside you fighting this. And I think that's where the, 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 the clash happens. And it's beautiful. I want to try to figure out, do you feel, at least in your work, you've managed to harness the board of directors in your head have you gotten buy-in or and this is what i was trying to ask, or is there still a conflict where they still like look but as soon as he gets home because that's all we understand yeah except that so no there is no conflict because i don't see them as opposing ends of a team i think they're a continuum okay the one plays defense the other plays offense okay and depending on the strategy we're playing different teams have to play yeah right 
it goes to the way I speak English. I, I love hearing the criticism. When, when did you start speaking like this? My whole life. As Never. far as I know. It's but impossible. Let me, answer, let me answer you. Let me answer you. Mommy, may I please have some, <laughs> some milk? <laughs> so, let me, so, let me, so let me answer you this way, right? So if you, you know, like I've got recorded video content of mine at 17, the first time I won the World Championship in public speaking. I've got recorded video footage of mine at 15 when I first started public speaking. Mm. I've got recorded video footage of mine at 13 um, when I had just won a, there was like a mini contest, and I had won like a <laughs> mini contest of, you know, all the under 13s were doing Kyokushin in, in, in that particular like part of town or whatever. And I watch and I, and that guy is a consistent guy. There's mm. no change there, right? So I think what has morphed over time and, and I want to find the right words to, to explain it, so you must be patient with me. Sure. Isn't it we agree that you can be a bookkeeper and a chartered accountant? Mm -hmm. Both are in the same discipline, but there are different levels of proficiency. Yeah. Right. But to acquire those levels of proficiency, there's certain things they have to do to prove themselves capable mm -hmm. of working at that level. Mm -hmm. Right. What do I do? I'm a global speaker. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means in a week from now, I'll be in Tokyo. A week after that in Kuala Lumpur. A week after that in Brazil. And everywhere I go, I am completely relatable. Yeah. So what South Africans say, he doesn't sound South African. Mm. No, because I'm a globalist. Yeah. I sound how I need to. And I've been trained to. This is important. You don't wake up talking like this. Yeah. I was trained to. This is why I'm the highest paid speaker in the continent. It's because when I land in Nigeria, I hit. When I land in Mombasa, I hit. When I land in Beijing, I hit. When I land in Los Angeles, I share the stages with the biggest guys you guys follow on Twitter and on social media. And every time I get off, they go, God. Yes, as you're flexing, boy, but we feel it. But the point is, it's because I take what I do seriously. Yeah. And if the choice is to choose between remaining who I was in the small confines of this environment yeah. and becoming who I have become in the broader context of the global environment, mm -hmm. for me, that's not a choice you want to make me to make because you're not going to like the decision that I'm going to take. Sure. So that's how I think of it. It's like... Um, and and by the way, I'm I'm completely easy, right? Mm. This is why there are some people who you I'm sure you've heard this criticism a lot, uh, and people go, you know, how well you speak English is not an indication of your intelligence. Sure. Yeah. Who said it was? Because I didn't. Yeah. And and I think those who say that are flaring up their own inadequacies. Of course. None of us, certainly in my experience, who spoke English in a particular way, said, well, if you can't speak it this way, you're therefore less intelligent. Sure. My feeling is, and I don't want to be insensitive, but I think it's true, mm. that those who were unable to speak English at a particular level of proficiency mm. inferred of themselves to be less intelligent. True. But only you can make you feel that way. It's because not me. it's not me. It's not me. It's certainly nothing I've done. I mean, I'm Whatever language you speak, you speak it properly. Yeah. Who will listen to me speak his Zulu and then they have like a it's like the matrix glitch. Sure. Okay. What's happening? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, but it's just because when I'm in the context, I understand the role. Mm. And when I'm in the context, I know what I need to do to be effective in that environment. I want to say something very quickly. It's not selling out. That because was actually gonna be my next question. Let me tell you why it's not selling out. Sure. Because if it was selling out then you would be going to work today with Yes. Right. So we can't choose the rate of our connectivity to our ethnicity as we've defined it. Mm. does not make me an African. No mm. does not make me an African. So we must then define, when we say Panuel is an African, what is it that we mean? Because I can hate black people and mm. speak the most fluent Isizolo. Mm. I can hate Isiendo. Yes. Gotwang Saz. Ukoganepesh. Ukoganepesh. By the way, I actually think this is perhaps what the, 
I call it the Vusi fault line. Like I always feel like I fit into this fault line of grayness. Sure. Right. You, by the way, are walking very fast into that fault line. <laughs> so let me forewarn you. But I think that fault line is that South Africa doesn't have a template for us. Yes. So it's still trying to figure us out. The whole continent. That's a true story. Yeah. That's a true story, right? You know, we have a, um, a business in Nigeria. I spend a lot of time there. And I notice how a lot of the Nigerians who are what you and I are here don't live there. True. They don't. You'll find them in London. You'll find them in Dubai. You know, yeah. that's where you'll find them. You'll find them in the US. Mm. And I think the reason for that is similar to SA. There's no quite, there's no template yet for this guy mm. who can be African and Nasa is a sin to Sake. Sure. But at the same time, harbor a set of views and engrage critically in thought mm. and come out with an outcome that we would not have naturally come out at. That's why they will say you're a sellout. It has sure. to be the only way to explain it. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I think of it, you know? 2012, my brother was graduating at Rhodes University and two of the biggest takeouts for me there besides my mom was on a plane for the first time, which made me very happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he introduced me to an amazing group called The Soil. Oh, um, the performers? Yeah. Oh, man. You know, um, amazing. But besides that, he introduced me to this random American guy who was speaking to a bunch of writing students in the classroom, telling them, um, if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And that sparked a fascination in, in motivational speaking for That's me. That's E.T.? That's Eric Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then I found the Les Browns. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Not nearly. I was hungry. Jeez. <laughs> you got to be hungry. <laughs> My brother's actually got a picture with Les Brown. I get goosebumps every time I think of Les, man. Not a motivational speaker. Miles Monroe, I think, is absolutely oh. fascinating. Um, oh, don't even get me started, man. Thinker, Miles. A thinker. <sighs> Philosopher. I've got so much to say, but I actually want you to, I'll hold back on my thoughts. I just wanted to, to link the, the fact that you're a global speaker to some of those guys, you know. What am I trying to ask? And by the way, before you say what you want to say, let me say something. There is somebody who will watch this and say, is Vusi saying you can't be a global speaker and speak as if you put me No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that wasn't my path. Yeah. That's so important to make that point. All ah, of us I remember my point. have a pathway to where we want to get to, and you don't get to make somebody else's pathway less credible because it wasn't the one you've taken. Sure. Right? Sure. You have to remember, I'm 38 years old. I've been a professional speaker since I was 19. It's crazy. I've been on stage since I was 15. I've been holding the microphone and looking into audiences for mm. longer um, than most people watching this have probably been alive. Sure. What I have forgotten, many people haven't learned yet. Hmm. I've worked in six of the seven continents. At last count, 59 countries. I've had the privilege of standing and addressing audiences who don't even speak the English language. Hmm. And as I address them, there is a, a translator. And at the end of my keynote, there's tears in the room. That's my measure of success. It's whether or not... I am technically proficient at what I do. Mm. No doubt in my mind, somebody will come into the craft and industry who will approach it differently. And I hope to be the guy who will open the door for them and go, yo, genala ishaya ganje. Sure. Right? But I think all of us have a role to play in this continuum of change. Mm. And you push the wave for your generation the way you know how. Because when I got into this game, there were guys who pushed the way for my generation. True. The way they knew how, right? A lot of those guys today, I am technically superior than. But ngashonib. Sure. Ngashonib, but nothing figure go by born bang vulelum yang, but onge and I'm fine. You know? A lot of those guys, when I look at their material, I'm like, wow, this is, we have a lot of work to do. Got to angin and clonib. Yes. We have one. So that's the point I wanted to make. It's like, there's no, people need to get out of this idea that it's binary. It's either this or that. It's sure. not. We, it's a continuum. We all have a, we all, the one has to flow for the other to happen, mm. right? Because that's just how the mindset of the world works. It's gradual, but eventually the change takes place.
I think what I wanted to link earlier from Eric Thomas, Les Brown and the rest was when you look at the local speakers. Yes. Speaking is very vast. Uh, yes, 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 yes. The two guys that stood out even to this day is yourself and, and Trevor Noah. Mm. And when you were speaking about English, I wanted to link, I don't know if the term is entomology or what. Mm. Both of you guys are very big on that. And mm. I've realized, at least for me, English is just but one language, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. actually a mixed masala of many languages in the past. I find that people that tend to be hyper intelligent, in my opinion, besides being well-traveled, are people that have the ability to take a language or words and break them down yes. and find the history. Yes, Trevor goes into other languages as well, but I've seen that you're, you're big on that. Yes, it's very important. You're big on taking this word, what is its origin? Is it Latin? Is it Greek? What did it intend and why is it here now? And by the time you've done that exercise, you've learned so many other things about life, which add depth to your talks that people I don't, sadly, I feel they probably don't appreciate. So, whoo, you're gonna get me hot under the collar. The average person watching this understands about my industry as they probably do. About the depth of the Milky Way. Mm. And if you're watching this going, what is he talking about? That's my point. Sure. Right. <laughs> um, I wanted to jump in narrative story and your conversation with Sadhguru because it, it goes that deep. Exactly. And so let's let's arc back. Let me just let me just let me just flex a little bit. Cool. So as an orator, by the way, it feeds on to what happened over the past week or so, but as an orator, I'm taught to study technique mm. to voice devoid of the talent. So my training is I want to analyze the technique of Penwell. Yeah. Not Penwell. Yes. Right. So I've spent hundreds of hours studying Adolf. Hundreds. Adolf. Hitler. Hundreds of hours. I'm fascinated that you say that because I've studied the biggest leaders, a lot of them being evil because there's something special about them. But you, you see, you, you, to, to be, people misunderstand being yeah. evil. People honestly misunderstand it. Sure. And here's the way I explain it to people. Why do Christians go to church? Mm. Because they're not in denial about the capabilities of the devil. If they were, they wouldn't go to church. Sure. They wouldn't pray. Sure. He's most incapable. He's the devil. Mm. You can't be evil and be incapable. Yeah. Because then your evil is of no consequence. Sure. So when, when I study Adolf, Mussolini, mm. and you, I've hundreds of hours I spent watching their stuff, mm. and an order of magnitude more hours watching, as I call him, the singer, not the public speaker, Martin mm. Luther King, the greatest orator, in my, in my humble opinion, of all time, Frederick Douglass, somewhere in the middle. And anybody who's never read any of Frederick Douglass' speeches, like you haven't lived. This yeah. guy, this guy had the ability to arc language into story and mm. fabric story into experience with three words back to back. And, and he would just, he would just hit you, man. I always say, as I, as I love hip hop, I, I could never do it. Yeah. But maybe that's the admiration. Hip hop was our school, man. So for me, I think of Frederick Douglass as do me, and the volume. Mm. That's how I Stogie remember. T. That'll tell you my generation. Sure. Stogie, We're the old people call him now, yeah. right? But the guy's ability to manipulate words mm. is unbelievable. So when you see a speaker, right, and you hear a few words and you say, ah, just speak English, ah, just suit, mm. scam, you're not reflecting me, you're reflecting you. Yes because you've not taken the time to understand what I do. Mm. So for instance, back to the technique. So Hitler is probably the archetype of what we call stochastic speakers, mm. right? He speaks like it's a drumbeat. Sure. This was Hitler, he had a rhythm. There's another guy at the moment in politics in South Africa, of course, very popular. Everyone Firebrand. knows him. But this is how he speaks, he's got a rhythm. And just as he builds up, when he wants something to happen, that rhythm gets harder and harder. He's a rhythm speaker. Yeah. If you pull the rhythm from him, the words, don't carry. 
And that's why people get riled up, was because he's got them in that rhythm, mm. in that emotion. That was Hitler's way of doing it. Martin Luther King didn't speak, he sang. I have a dream. Mm. Dan da 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 That one day. He didn't end words. The word went into the other. In rap, Eminem's like that. Sure. He doesn't end words. The one word end goes into the other. Mm. You know who else is like that? Little Wayne. If you listen to any of Little Wayne's stuff, the words don't end. He's constantly singing, mm. right? Um, so as an orator, I study across all of those communication sciences because whether you're a newspaper journalist mm. or a hip-hop artist or a politician or a CEO mm. in a results presentation or a public speaker, you're all trying to do the same thing. Sure. You're trying to get a message across. And I'm trying to figure out what's the best and most effective way to get that message across. That's crazy because at least for someone who's hearing this for the first time, to understand that not only have you practiced your craft, but the studying of almost everyone and their nuances. For me as someone with a curious mind and who loves knowledge, education, history, do you think you're the smartest person on the continent? <laughs> no, not by the stretch of the imagination. And I and, say that- And how would you measure, how do you measure intelligence? That's a good question. So no, I don't think so, but only because I've met because of what I do, I've had the incredible privilege of meeting some super sharp people, man. Mm. Man, there's some sharp folks out there. Because you know, there's a lot of people who say things and look, we, we don't know how serious they are that if you were to run for president, they'd vote for you. Yeah. And, and people laugh that off, yes. like they've laughed off to Tuzani Zuma, but yes. to you what know. you're saying, if you're not paying attention yes. to why are those people saying that, and if yes. this guy actually decided to flex, you might see a movie. People laughed at Julius at some, people laughed at Donald Trump. True story. So it always it always seems crazy and then it seemed logical. Yeah. That's the story of history, right? The story of history is first people say it's crazy, then they go, but of course. Everyone knew it was gonna happen. You're as, like, a, as, a, as a historian, mm? go back into the archives. Sure. Ask Kai what the average black South African was saying about oh, Nelson Mandela when they were fighting for the struggle. It's not like they were saying, y'all go for it. Sure. A lot of them were going, mm. sure. it seemed crazy today, it seems logical. Mm. Almost everything seems crazy until it seems logical. Yeah. So no, I don't think I'm the smartest person on the continent. I think Is that humility? Are, no, I think that's a statement of fact. Okay. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I think I'm in the top 1% of the smartest people in the continent. It's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean on that. And, and by the way, here's my, you asked the question, Please. what's my definition of intelligence? And, and here's my definition of intelligence. My definition of intelligence is how elastic your mind is. Intelligence is not a number. It's okay. a function of elasticity. But or how do you measure that? And that's where I'm going. Okay. You, you determine Panwell's intelligence by his ability to interrogate new data mm. using new frameworks mm. and to arrive at new outcomes without getting stuck in the past. That's intelligence. That's how we as human beings have adapted. Mm. When they say human beings are the most adept and that we're the most intelligent species, mm. those two things are intertwined, you see. Sure. We have adapted because of our intelligence. So you can't frame intelligence unless you frame adaptation. Okay. So it is in your ability to adapt mm. to interrogate new evidence to find yourself in completely new waters mm. and be comfortable in your ability to consume new facts and exist in a new way that's intelligence for me not what to pass school in the and you truly believe there are people better than you because i know normally people would measure someone's intelligence on their depth on one field it can't be and not to what you're saying, multiple fields and the ability to change frameworks. That can't be. I mean, if, if that's if if that's our measure, that that for me is your your ability to be technically proficient at yes. something is is how deep you go. Sure. In Elon, a Elon Musk field. normally says, "I'm not smart. I'm I just do engineering every day. That's why you'll think I'm clever." But that's right. Maybe if you're asking about football or comedy, you'd be like. The way he dances on stage is embarrassing. So, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I mean, I think no. For me, that's how I frame intelligence. I think intelligence is a, it's an elasticity of mind thing. You know this, like you, you remember when you're like, I'm busy studying now, right? But mm. if you think about when you're busy studying, yeah, one of the things your brain starts to do, you can't feel it, but you can almost feel it. Your brain becomes more elastic. It's almost as if you retain information quicker. You mm. read faster, or you're more curious. You look for new data more quickly. Mm. That elasticity 
is a measure of intelligence, for me anyway. Sure. So when I look at an intelligent human being, in my world that's ever changing, fast adapting, I'm looking at your ability to come into a space where you'd be completely unfamiliar. Sure. And within a short space of time, create a familiarity for yourself. Do you believe those people should be running the country, the continent? It's a tough question because to run a system, mm. you typically need structures and measures. Okay. And those people are great at designing. They're not great at running. Okay. They don't, they don't want to be managing things. I was a timekeeper on a Wednesday. That's not what those people do. Those people ask the question, why must you arrive at eight o'clock? Not did you arrive at eight o'clock? So here's a, another way. I was explaining this to a client of mine who is having a challenge migrating their team into the remote workspace. Right? Sure. They're like, it's this remote thing and four day work week, blah, blah, blah. So I said to him, where does the eight to five work day come from? Do you know? He says, I don't know. I said, well, the first industrial revolution preeminates from the United Kingdom, London. Mm. In the winters, right? At the time, the sun would rise sometimes as late as seven in the morning mm. and set as early as six in the evening. Now, because there wasn't a proliferation of electricity at the time, the British decided that it wasn't safe for people to work at dark. So the British invented for us, they did, the work hour sure. and work day, eight to five. Mm. So you're watching this, the company you're working for has got in your employment contract, employment hours designed at a time 200 years ago. Sure. And we're completely comfortable with that today. For me, that's what I mean by intelligence. It's not your ability to go be at work eight to five. It's your ability to go why eight sure. and why to five. And to think about how do you create a framework and an environment where people can understand that. So you're saying people that run a country should be ops people. And back in the day, obviously, you'd have, I guess, the philosophers. Yes. And you're saying people that should be running countries are ops people. I'm saying people that should be running governments okay. are ops people. And the structures. smartest people, according to you, should just feed into and, the psychology and, of what should be done. And again, I don't divorce those two. I think you're going okay. to have incredibly capable and smart people at that operational layer. Sure. It's, it's fundamental. Otherwise, the operational layer will, won't hold. Sure. But I am saying those people who are constantly flexing at the guardrails of society, people who are pushing the boundaries of what society defines to be normal, mm. in my experience, and it's just my experience, they are limited when you plug them at that level. Sure. They're better used when you plug them at a different level. That's why a lot of us you'll find as entrepreneurs, or you'll find them in creative arts. It's precisely because we want to be able to flex. Daniel yeah. wants to be able to flex. He doesn't want you to tell him what time to be at work. Sure. He wants you to adjudicate him on output, not on, you know, so for him it's productivity, not present. 100%. Right. And for those people, it's just a different way of working. I think where the world is challenged today is creating a harmony between these mm. two groups of people and how they function and work. But if you think about the greatest leaders of our time, the most visionary leaders of all time, mm. they typically have tended to be the people who push the guardrails and then are very good at surrounding themselves with those operators. Sure. Because once I've pushed the guardrails and I've set a new way of working, somebody has to make sure the train arrives on time. I'm not that guy. You'll never go into politics or at least anytime soon or at least feed into politics because listening to you, I'm realizing that if we're going to agree with that framework, a lot of our government people on the continent are just not even listening to the arguably creative, intelligent, dynamic minds. I don't even know if they're good at ops. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think if you study politics globally, that's not a uniquely African thing. Fair I just enough. think it's, it's what politics attracts. And that's a, a different question, by the way, which is what I, I'm curious about this and I want to get your answer on this. Which one creates which one? Does the system of politics create the quality of politicians we have? Or is it the quality of politicians we have who create a system that perpetuates them? I must answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. It's a chicken and egg question, but I genuinely want to know. I think the answer to that, for me at least, is I think our political system has almost got nothing to do with the politicians and almost everything to do with the wealthy elite and mostly their progeny, their descendants, who normally don't know what it takes to build anything. So they end up buying and renting idiots to try and run a framework that they themselves don't even understand. Mm, mm, mm. You know, so mm. uh, a big issue that I have personally is new money is not well trained mm. on the history of what it takes to build anything. You look at new politicians in South Africa, they, they never built anything. They weren't trained. So you've got a situation of that. And if their kids end up becoming rich, wealthy, those kids are going to end up 
not being in politics, but they're going to fund the next generation of politicians, not understanding anything. But the sad thing is they're not even willing to sit and listen to the builders and why it's important to not milk the cow till it bleeds. Milk it, leave some, leave some milk for the calf so the calf can grow into a cow that they you can, can milk. milk again. Yeah. They milk this thing till it bleeds and it gets infected and dies. Then they wonder tomorrow why you have no cattle and no milk. You know, and it, it, it frustrates everything that we're trying to do, at, at least as human beings. And it's, it's disrespectful to actually intelligent people. And it's very frustrating for intelligent people when people who have the power to influence and not just politicians, but the wealthy people that fund them are so short sighted and they are self destructive because they are so greedy, so greedy. They end up killing their own customers. It's mad. You're automating McDonald's, Steers, KFC, Mr. Price now. Mm. And tomorrow you're going to wonder why you don't well, have customers. No customers yeah. But you've eroded the whole silly, middle class. Yeah, silly, because yeah. you are just greedy. So that's that's my answer. I and was asking you about politics and being president. <laughs> and when you're going to run. <laughs> um, I'm a believer, Panuel. And um, every, every time in my life I have argued with God, I've lost. Who's every God? Time. Sorry, you mentioned something about a rabbi earlier. I yes. actually wanted to touch on... Yeah, we'll get to that in a okay. minute. So every time in my life I've argued, I'm going to go, I've lost. Every time. Mm. Every time. So I have surrendered my life. Some people call it to the will of the universe. Mm. Others define it as Allah. Whatever you define God as, it's pretty clear that we are not here by accident. That's the very existence of human beings, what it took for Earth to exist. These 16 kilometers between the surface of the Earth and the outer layer of our stratosphere that sustain all life, all biodiversity as you know it. This is 16 kilometers. It's not a lot. And when you think about the miracle of that, the billions upon billions of us that have inhabited this Earth, mm. the trillions of diversity of species that exist most of which are still undiscovered to this day. Mm. We're foraging the Amazon forest in parts we have not even discovered new species. We're trying to get to Mars when we've not reached the depths of our own oceans. Mm. That, to me, I refuse to believe is simply scientific confluence. I think there's a grand plan. We can debate who the planner is. Sure. And if we want, no matter who they are, yeah, or what they are, can be community. We can debate that, but my belief is that my God brought me into this earth at this time for a purpose, mm. and every time I have argued with Him about what my purpose is, I have lost. So I've stopped arguing. Okay. So, so would I run? The answer is I don't know. It's God's, it's God's will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If and, you flow in that direction. And this is why when people say to me, do it, I go, no. Because until I hear it from that voice, I'm not doing it. And I know that voice exists because particularly more recently, there have been times when the only thing that was speaking to me was that voice. Yeah. So I've heard it audibly. I know it exists. And Amshambe Inkeenga is the language we use. Mm. Right, other God, other Allah. Some talk about consciousness. Mm. For me, we're all funneling the same wisdom. Sure. This is why I have a rabbi. I'm not Jewish. Okay. I have an Imam. I'm not Muslim. Mm. Wisdom doesn't know lanes and highways, Chief. It's wisdom. And you seek it where it exists. Mm. And so when I have questions that are wisdom questions, I go to people who have a perspective that I go, how would you think of this, right? And and I hear from them how they mm. would approach it. Do you do you go deep? Do you go deeper than most people? I ask this because as you speak about the 16 kilometers and where we come from and the universe and the depths of the ocean, we may not have time, but your thoughts are on simulation theory. Mm. Your thoughts are on the fact that we're plugged into a matrix to mm. feed machines, mm. Mm. the thoughts mm. of the dinosaurs never existed. There's mm. no such thing as Mars. And mm. everything exists because you exist. And it's only because you're conscious and you've actually created everything, which therefore makes you God. And the day you die, this entire universe you've created, the science versus religion, the, those things are not real. They all were created by you. And this is why I know you call yourself 
Pan will the God. Boom. <laughs> Let him know. <laughs> um, and and of course, you know, I feel sorry for you, man. Sure. I do. I can only imagine Nakaya, Muslim and Gosgaz, how difficult it is. Because let me let me explain you. Sure. You're like a, you're like a lion that actually was in the wild and now is captive. Okay. And it's sitting with all these other captive lions going, yo! No, chief. Sure. Right? So so the problem with you mm. is your your mind is so vast and expanse that you are in an environment that only understands contraction. Yeah. This is why you are so misunderstood. That's why you're attacked so much. I know, because I've lived what you live. Sure. The only difference between you well, and I... Well, you still get attacked. So at least we're still in the same We're in the same boat. I, but I think the difference between you and I yeah. is, whereas you went and marshaled fully into the fire. Yeah. Sure. You know, I do my work. Once in a while, it... Sure. And disappear for a year or two. Besser once in a while in Buya foot in Telindo. Sure. You are in it every day. I, I, I don't know mentally what it does to you, because yeah. I know mentally what it does to me. Fair. Um, it's a dangerous space. And it was going to be one of my questions around how you engage average minds that absolutely refuse to even begin challenging their minds to, for, for bigger things. The, here's the, the answer to your question is actually much simpler than, than you would think. Yeah. Right. It is not in the... we. we as human beings, we love to think of ourselves as supremely intelligent. Yeah. But the history of mankind is that actually the average people keep mankind going. Okay. So if you study, if you study any of the study any of the like well-known historical civilizations, study mm. the nation Aguazul, right? You study the the Roman Empire, mm. right? You study the Barbarian Empire, the Vandals Empire. I was explaining to my son today why when you destroy something, it's called vandalism. Sure. He didn't know that there was an empire. What is the term? Entomology? That's right. right. Okay. <laughs> he didn't know that the there origin was of words. Of words, right? Yeah. And he didn't know that uh, there was a nation of the vandals. And every time they went and conquered new lands, they destroyed them so horridly that mm. anything that was destroyed that badly was a mark of them. And so yeah. was coined the phrase vandalism. Right. Thank you. Or why barbarians existed and why when you act in a particular way, people say you're being barbaric. Yeah. Le le there's a there's a genesis for that word, sure. right? So and I'm now I'm busy, by the way, doing a genesis for why we talk about Izolu, mm. Guazolu, yes. Gesizolu. Yes. And I'm trying to I'm trying to frame and understand that because I think there's such beauty there. Why? When you know one of my firms, a fund management firm, is called VUKA, V U K A. Yes. And it means in Gesizulu exactly what it means in Swahili. It's exactly the same meaning. Beautiful. So I find myself presenting to pension funds in East Africa and I go, you know, I'm the CEO of Vuga Fund Managers. They go, this oh, this is your company? company. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the play on words with the V U V U V U C. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tembe Y O K A. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, there you, there you That's go. That's dope. There you go. Ah, I try with my little <laughs> brain. Hand. And by the way, you know, the, 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 the motivation for Vuga was I was in South Africa. Um, around the time of the riots in Durban. Mm. And I was just like, oh, we've got to rise up, man. And so that word Vuga was playing at the back of my sure. head. And we were doing some thinking in the firm at the time. But the, the point I was making is all of these words have a genesis. Mm. And, and if you don't understand the genesis of the word, you rob yourself of understanding its true context and meaning. True. And so you then interpret what you have extracted from that word to be its meaning. When that's not its true meaning, mm. what you've extrapolated from that word, that's not its true meaning, yeah. right? Um, now, you're speaking about average people and civilizations. What I was, yeah, wait, that's where I was going with this was to say, if you, you know, there's a, there's this beautiful scene on the movie uh, The Gladiator. Yeah. Um, and the guy who, uh, the son of Marcus Aurelius, who's now taken over as emperor, is um, he brings back, you remember, the games mm. and people are now killing each other. And one of the senators says, people won't buy this thing. You know, he's making people kill each other at the Colosseum. Yeah. And, this, and this, the other senator replies and says to him, he understands Rome. Mm. Rome is a mob. He'll bring them war and they'll love him for it. Boom. At our most, 
primal sense, we're just animals. We're just a mob at our most prime. We love to think we are intelligent. We are not. We have the ability to exist at that level. Mm. But at our most primal, we're just animals. That helps you understand why genocides can take place, why atrocities exist. Sure. Watching a genocide and a mass murder of a civilization and participating in the mass murder of somebody online is the same thing. Because we're a mob and we're animals. Because we're a mob. We're a mob. And we like to think when I see the other person hurt in Gizomzuela, mm. history doesn't bail that out. History says, actually, that when a mob attacks Panuel, yes. and Uvosi sees Panuel bleed, Uvosi is going to laugh. Of course. He's going to enjoy that. right? The Germans call it Schadenfreude, to draw pleasure from the suffering of another. Mm. That's human beings at their most primal nature. Cancel culture. All of the, it's, it's us at our most primal nature. Every person watching this loves to think, myself and you included, sure. that we're this smart. Yes, we have the ability to for that mm. and certainly the capability to exist at that level. But when the SHIT hits the proverbial, all of us default to that primal. All of us. Have you left us? You know, when I first spoke to you last year, you were telling me you were in another country. You're like, look, I spend a lot of my time here. I'm like, ah, but don't leave us behind. Hmm. Have you left us? I've heard rumors of Johan Rupert checking out yeah, yeah. of South Africa and he's been selling a lot of his stocks. And I, I, if it's true, I know a big part of it was his resentment at the mob. Sat with Kevin Mkari at the chairman's, I don't know, it's called the chairman's interview or conversation. And he tried to extend a hand as Father Christmas, which he said he's not. To say, look, if you can bring young, talented black people, I will bring my old, rich, white friends and let's try and find each other. And the mob online attacked him so aggressively. And I'm sure some of his mates laughed at him and like, we told you. We told you, yeah. And he started saying things like, look, my children feel in danger, so we're leaving. And the bulk of his wealth, most South Africans don't even know, sits in Switzerland with Richmond. That's right, yes. So I'm asking, have you left us? Have you abandoned us? I know there's a lot of talented South Africans that are moving to Silicon Valley, places like Dubai, not as many people speak about places like Hong Kong, etc. Have you abandoned us, Vusi? <laughs> Have you left us alone <laughs> to fend for ourselves? I think um, I'm going to go pendula ganje before. Gushugoti, when I was 17, right, I I won the national uh, competition in public speaking, and I had this amazing opportunity to travel to Australia. Hey, hey, mate. Australians, let us all rejoice. So off I went to Australia and the most amazing Waltzing time. Matilda is what and I That's it. That's <laughs> sure. <laughs> have you ever watched uh, Muriel's Wedding? I haven't. Is that a movie? It, man. Is it like stereotypical Australian? Um, it's Australian. Like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like Crocodile Dundee Cheesy. Jeez. It's terrible, Muriel. You have to watch it. Oh, mate. It's a bender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, boss. Uh, I, I love rugby, so. Vusi, can we go for a breaky? Things. They never oh. finish their words. And it's Vusi, can we go for a breaky? Remember the first time I heard that, I was like, what the? Is a break? <laughs> like breakfast. I'm like, why didn't you say the full word? Anyway, so, so, I'm going to go Pindula Ganja before. Um, I remember when I was 17 and I, you know, it was my second international trip, second international competition, and um, 2002. Yeah. Gives you a sense of how long I've been at this game. I'm 37, by the way. You're 38. So, 38. We're we're here by a year. Yeah. So, so anyway, off I go. And Oled Lami said something to me. I'll never forget on that trip. What to my mommy? I'm done. I'm going to go to my Home is in you. Mm. You'll never leave home. Your body might not be there, but your body doesn't have to because your heart is. Mm. So here's why I'm answering your question in that way. Because, Bafo, I've tried. I won't lie to you. This country has pained me more than I could tell you. It's brought me to the brink of tears, my country. Doesn't appreciate you. And Especially just, the people that you're trying to inspire, motivate, and maybe hustle for. And that's the part for me that confuses me. And we must, let's spend some time talking about that because I feel very strongly about that. Mm. That's the part that confuses me. That's the part I don't understand, right? Mm. So anyway, the, uh, the short answer to your question is, no, I no longer live here. But as we speak, you're coming, I think, to my office tomorrow, mm. you know, 
We've just opened a new office right here in Bravonia. Congrats. From my office, I overlook Santon City. Discovery is on the other side of my office. Glorious. I occupy a floor. I've got a beautiful pan view of all of Joburg, right? Because when I made the decision that actually, fuck it, I was like, okay, then I'm going to do it properly. Sure. Right. Um, so home is here. As we speak, we're busy raising for the Vuga Fund. Yeah. That's a sub-Sahara, that's a Southern Africa fund where they focus on, the, it's a sub-Sahara fund with a focus on Southern Africa. And so a lot of the pension funds I'm speaking to are here, mm. right? Um, but here's the, 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 the other answer to your question. My work requires of me to work in the future. Okay. Right. As a speaker, that's what I talk about the future. Mm. My very first book, which now has sold over a million copies, the Magna Carta. Jeez, congrats. Right. These fancy English words. Let me tell you, the Magna Carta I launched in 2016, 2017, I launched the Magna Carta. I launched it at the Café del Mar in Barcelona, Spain. On the day- In where? Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah, Jeez. Call it Barcelona. On the day of the launch, I sold 6,000 copies. Crazy. And in my own country, people didn't even know the book had been written. Mm. Right? So I'm saying that only to say the following to you, which mm. is that um, today there's still people who go, why would you name a book Magna Carta of Exponent? Yeah, I was going to ask you to give the full name. Right? It's and, like a tribe called Quest. <laughs> and, 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 and that's the point, right? The point is why you... St- it, it's, a, it's, it's almost a... A good reflection of our country. Why are you stuck at what the cover title is? Open the book and read it. Sure. What's the full title though? Please the Magna yes. Carta of Exponentiality. Jesus. Magna Dan- Carta. Danke Ma- English. Danke the Shakespeare. Magna Carta actually comes from 1215. This guy called John, mm. right, who led a revolution of farmers that marched on the steps of the king, right? And the reason they marched on the steps of the king was because at the time in England, in the 1200s, say, mm. there were people who were in the house of lords because they owned a certain amount of land. Mm. That's why when you own land, you're called a land lord. Boom. Silab. <laughs> so anyway, so, so and, and what was happening is these landlords had peasants living. Mm. It's, an unpoli- it's an impolite term, but that's how history is written. Sure. Had they, these well, peasants- we still have peasants now. They probably have a different name, name. which is but, politically correct. Sure, right. We, we, now we call them the masses. Sure. Right. And then two, three generations time, somebody will go, why did they call them that? Yes, that's right? derogatory. So, so um, they had, and, and those peasants were made to pay a certain levy mm to the landlords who paid a certain levy to the king. That's yeah. how the king lived. And what happened is the king pushed up the levy. Mm. The landlords pushed up the levy to the peasants and the peasants were like, we can't pay this. Sure. So this one particular farmer leads an entire revolution. They march through the streets and they eventually arrive in the city of London, which mm. by the way, most people don't know that the person who actually founded the walls that protected the city of London is an African, a man called Severus. That's why my crypto startup was named Severus. He Do you tell enough of these stories? Because the story it, is amazing. It's hard to because Angitos Bees is Kulumang Oguti Okay. You know, I think the point is we can have this conversation because that's how we are tuned sure. in. But most people are not there, yeah. right? But go and read up about Severus and who Severus was. That sure. Literally the walls that were formed around what then became London were built by an African. Yeah. Without that African, that those walls of London would not have existed. And he did so to protect London from because from, from all the other, you know, kind of tribes that are trying to attack it. The point yeah. I'm making is this. So all of this is happening. This guy marches on the street, on the on he basically gets to the steps of the king. The king mm-hmm. is forced to now sit with these people and they're like, look, Chief, if you don't change the rules, you're out. Sure. And they force him to write a charter. The Latin for it was a Magna Carta. Beautiful. The Great Charter. That charter is the foundation of some of the rules and laws we hold to be true in society today. Mm. It was the first time it was written on paper that all men are created equal, that all men will be presumed innocent until proven guilty by the law. It was the first time those ideas were written on paper, ideas we live by Mm. today. For me, all of this is important because I don't understand how you function in a society with a set of rules and you don't understand their genesis. Yeah. This is why a lot of people find it difficult when you say, but that thing doesn't work anymore. Sure. We're so hopped up on tradition and we're not willing to adapt to innovation because just because we've convinced ourselves that the way it was done is the mm. best way for it to be done. 
That's why everybody today is talking in South Africa about you to have direct candidacy running for for public office, right? Mm. Why must you have political representation? Well, you you need to go and read the constitution. But more than this, mm. you need to read the time during which the constitution was written. Hundred percent. Because if you read the text void of the context, you miss the purpose. Boom. So we end up arguing over semantics, right? Um, and as I say, this is not a, a, a conversation that a lot of us want to have. But I hope I've answered your question about I, have I, I left. I've, I read somewhere someone saying tradition and customs are just our ancestors who have passed on holding us hostage. Mm, 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 you know, mm, mm, mm. you were explaining, and I wanted to ask, you were explaining how when you launched a book in, in Barcelona, <laughs> in Spain, you, you sold 6,000 copies. And is there like a theory that you will never be appreciated at home? Not just for black Africans, but for almost everyone. Afrikaners came and became great here. Other people became great elsewhere. Is it just one of those things? Yeah, where I've accepted that. I'm from Newcastle. I'm black coffee. I will only really be appreciated at home. Trevor Noah, when I leave. Yeah. And we must just accept that. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. I've accepted that long ago. I've, but I've accepted three things. Yeah. The first thing I've accepted, which I, I would hope you are beginning to either battle with, if not, you've already assimilated yourself to, is that I will be misunderstood in my time. Yeah. And that's okay. Sure. Um, the apartheid capable statement is a good example of this, sure. right? That that I will. Oh, be, and you try to explain, and they just refuse to understand. They don't. They don't want to know. The emotions are just like don't even entertain the potential understanding. They don't want to know. Yeah. But so so the first is I've accepted that. I'm okay. like, okay, it's cool. I will not be understood in my time. Sure. Not by the average. That's cool, because as a, as a historian, I know that almost every single and I and I say this with as much humility as is possible sure. to make this statement because it's not a humble statement almost every single human being that pushed the boundaries of humanity was typically hated in their time 100% they were ridiculed in their time Crucified. everybody everybody today loves Crucified. you know Fanon everybody today loves yeah. Steve Biko everybody today loves MLK everybody today loves M uh, Mar uh, Malcolm X yeah but going Je Jesus Christ go into the time yeah yeah Jesus Christ himself yeah Five days from walking, going into a town on the back of a donkey with palm leaves to coming out of the town on the back of a cross. Boom. Five days. That's how quickly they switch on you, man. Mm. The mob is that fickle, right? So, so the point is when you, but you have to make a decision about what is important to you. Sure. Do you want to be liked and understood in your time? Or do you want to be honest with the gifts and the tasks that your creator gave you? Mm. I would far rather be hated by man but loved by my God. Sure. Because the things he has sent me to do, I have done. The, the, the boundaries he has sent me to push, I have pushed. Yeah. So that's the first truth I've accepted. It's like... And the well, other two? Hit so, us. So, so the first truth is, you're not going to be liked or understood in your time. Sure. Um, the second truth is, the context is never going to be important as the emotion. The context is never going to be important as the emotion when okay. it comes to dealing with me. Okay. People are not interested in the context behind which something happens. Mm. They have an emotion that they're married to. Sure. And they're going to find whatever justification to feed that emotional proclivity. Yeah. Regardless of what the facts are and what the context of those facts would be. Sure. And I'm cool with that. Okay. The third is an alarming one as a South African, but it's true. Mm. It's that I think South Africa is on the way down before up. The way I explain South Africa to people is it's a bit like a bouncing ball. Mm. Right. You bouncing ball and you throw it. It has to hit the floor really hard, but when it bounces, it bounces much higher than where sure. it was originally. That's South Africa. We're a big, heavy bouncing ball. And we've missed the opportunity to address the issues we have. Mm. And so those issues manifest in other ways in our society. And so all of us, most of us are now pulling this, this ball down and the ball has to hit the floor. Does it have to? It has to. It has to. So this is natural. What's happening? Yes, yeah, Ray, yeah. Ray Dalio speaks about yes. billionaire hedge fund manager speaks about the the cycles of the economy and that That's some right. of these things, if you study history, never change. That's so right. Maybe but for some of us who are trying to prevent it, it's like leave you can't, it. You can't. You can't. Just prep yourself yes. so that when it bounces and moves up, you're well positioned. Absolutely. You've nailed to reap. it. You've nailed it. What you're doing, if you're trying to stop it, is it's it's the it's the physiological equivalent of standing in front of a transnet train yeah. that's moving at full speed where the rail is still there. Should we move out the way? I think I think it's more intelligent okay. to 
to do what you're doing. Not necessarily move out the way, but stand mm. on the side with a loud hail and telling people what's going to happen sure. when that train eventually hits the bear because it's going to. So that they're ready. So that they're ready. And the, but, and, but, the, and the bounce back is quicker than it could be otherwise. And just watch. I mean, I, again, Penn, you're, you're, you're a historian. Sure. Watch other nations in the continent. This is not just us. Yeah. Right? It isn't just us. Yeah. Every other major nation in the continent had their moment where that ball hit the floor. Mm. We haven't yet. We haven't. We think we have. Sure. We have not. What we have are all the signals of it. The unemployment rate, the labor absorption rate. Mm. Social uh, welfare growing. Social welfare grants. The You know, uh, a young person running a spaza shop somewhere posts that he's got two jobs and there's an entire line of people waiting to get a job. Yeah. Right? The, the, the degradation of the criminal justice system. Yeah. The lack of law and order. Unbelievable. Mm. All of those are signals that the train is moving in the wrong direction. Sure. I don't think you can stop it, but I do think you can soften the blow by doing the stuff that you're doing, you know, which is you've got this loud hailer and you're speaking into these people going, guys, sure. when this thing hits, these are going to be the consequences. If you chase away your hand rupert, yeah, as a good example, who suffers the most? Sure, because it's very, it's very nice for us to laugh and clap hands and let's say we're leaving. And the question is, who does suffer the most? And, the most? And, and by the way, I don't have to answer that question. The sure. answer to that question is study history. Just go next door to Zimbabwe and see what happens when you do that. Some and of if, the smarter, sorry, sorry. And please. by the way, and if you think we are, I don't know, different, <laughs> we're not. Sure. The average Zimbabwean on a, on a literacy level, mm. you and I both will agree, outshines the average South African 100%. because their education system is so good. Sure. So what do you think happens if the impact is the same, but the quality of education is not even the same? And, you know, everything that's happened south of Central Africa, people mm. migrate south. Where's our south? Mm. You know, Rotendo Matinyarare, a Zimbabwean guy, is a mate a of guy. mine. What a guy. I saw has, the interview we did with him. He said, um, when you look at, because <laughs> black South Africans are arrogant on the continent, and largely not because of anything black South Africans have built, but what... British colonizers and did he say that? And white Afrikaners uh, have done. If you compare black South Africans to other black Africans who yes. generally own and run their economies, yes. black South Africans on average are much poorer. Yes. So to what you're saying, yes. never mind what's going to happen. If you compare the average Zimbabwean now who is struggling and having to grow their own food, they can grow their own food. They may not have yes. money yes. or whatever, yes. but they yes. are wealthier, smarter, stronger. Some of them even physically. That's why some have been argued to be the, the ones behind some of the crimes in South Africa, catching transit, because the way they trained militarily and stuff and stuff is much more grittier than us. So if you think about, in my world of venture, right? I remember, you know, I've been in the venture game for just over a decade now. Mm. And um, 10 years ago. So in, in venture, we have this measure called a unicorn. A unicorn sure. is a company that has a valuation of a billion dollars or more. Valuation, not revenue, valuation sure. right, of a billion dollars or more and has to be achieved within a particular time frame. And typically those exist in the technology space. Sure. So we call them these hyper growth companies. You know, These are companies you might not have known about three years ago, but mm. today everybody's on Slack or everybody uses Notion or everybody uses Stripe to accept payments, yeah. right? You know, Stripe, when I met the founders of Stripe in uh, Abu Dhabi two years ago, mm. Stripe was the most valuable private company in the world. I think it was $96 billion Crazy. in valuation. Today, they're 56 billion. It's unbelievable, just the decline in their yeah. valuation. But the reason Stripe exists is because there's an actual use case mm. and it'll go back way above 100 billion. Okay. So, so the, the smart institutional, particularly North Hemisphere investors like, just hold on, it's a ruler. Sure. Valuation loss is just a loss on paper. It's not a sure. real money loss. But the point I was making is this. In my space of venture, mm. 10 years ago, basically the rest of Africa. Of course. But Kenya, but when's a galana man? I'll end up in Pesa Batin. Sure. Yeah, this is a bit. But to me, I'm a phone. I want our ATM. Our, ah, our banking our systems are, are superior. Yeah, it's bank. We laughed at them. Mm. We laughed at them. And then what happened? Well, then all of a sudden, Mbessa is now part of Voter, Vodacom or mm. the Voter Group, right? The Vodafone Group. Yeah. And the people who are behind that innovation have created an immense amount of wealth. Sure. So what do you think they did, Penn? 
they went back into those economies and they found other people building the new Mpesas. Mm. And they put cash there. So they didn't get invited to sit on a board and have paper wealth. They built something mm. and got actual wealth. Sure. And please say, please say that again. They weren't <laughs> invited because some someone may have missed that. And, and and they weren't invited at funny times to just come and sit on a board and look pretty and tick be, boxes. Because and and by the way, you know, boards play a fundamental role. But yeah. we must be clear about something. If Uvosi says to you he's on a board, what I'm telling you is I've been appointed to play a role of governance. Yes. Not value creation. Hundred percent. Founders create value. Executives create value. Yeah. Board members don't. They don't. They don't. Oversight government. And so, if we want to be deliberate about transforming the South African economy, yeah. we shouldn't be arguing over how many board members listed companies have. We should be arguing over how many founders are listed. That's the conversation. That's why I'm so angry about what happened to Usisa. How the, how the fuck did you guys let the guy who built Rebosis? What the fuck? What more do you need? Smart, educated, technical. Guy comes from banking into law, into real estate. What are the pants, Chita? What are the pants in your paper? What are the billion group idea? Why register? Ends up listed, and you fuckers let that shit slide. And then you tweet about it. Oh, tragic. What the fuck? But you understand why, right? That's the stuff. I know exactly why. Because business is I, actually a mafia. I know exactly mafia. why. But the point is. This mob, yeah. this is where I'm angry with the mob. Y'all got to tell me something. This mob that attacks Penuel, you can see I'm animated now. This mob that Breathe, attacks Baba, Penuel water. on Twitter. This mob that attacks Uvosi on Twitter. Where is that mob yeah. to attack when a C. Sange Bulana is clearly facing pressures? that you? And, and, and here's how I know what happened to CSIS, because I've seen it happen with me. Yeah. They attacked his business. They attacked his credibility. Sure. There were articles being published about, oh, there's a jet, he's paid, he hasn't paid. Yeah. That's how it works, though. For a nation that posits itself to be a nation builder and you want to create new wealth, you protect a guy like that. Sure. Because let me tell you, Chan, the guys who were in charge before 94, mm. they would never have let their guy sure. go through that shit. But it means it's not their guy. That, that was going to be my point. One of the things I've studied about the South African economy is there's almost always extortion and you almost always have to partner with the right mafia guys, of which I'll say this, I'll own this, but a company like Anglo-American, globally, you kind of need them to own shares in your business to be protected. So I don't know what's happened to CISA's company. I sense there was some reckless lending somewhere, but the reason you protect him like an African bank or the reason they'll do it is because they have a stake. And arguably, sometimes it's because you didn't let the right guy own a piece of your business. You said something. You asked a question about, you know, whether I believe in the matrix and all of those things. Yeah. I, I believe in, in it, but differently. Sure. I think that the most foolish amongst us are those who think conspiracy theories are just conspiracy. Sure. I think that the most foolish amongst us are those who believe that there is no agenda. Sure. This whole thing is just happening by its sure. itself. It's the people who believe that the free market is truly free. Yeah. The free market is free for those who are given an opportunity to be in it in the first place. Boom. Right. Um, and, and so the point is, how do you let that happen? And by the way, there is Osisa, mm. and we could just keep going down that list. No, there's a, there's a long list. We study them, but the quality of education and intelligence and knowledge in this country doesn't allow you to engage conversations like that with the average South African. Let me just say something. That, by the way, is on purpose. Of course. I don't think the miseducation of the of the average, the miseducation of, to use that unpopular phrase, the masses, is a mistake. Yeah. I think it's on purpose. I mm. think it's deliberate and it's intentional. It, it perpetuates the very same patterns of issues, of ownership, access. That, so I was talking to you about what's happening in East Africa today. Yeah. In East Africa today, Julian, my good friend Julian, right, and guys like him who are funding startups, they're not using money that they got in share somewhere. They're using money from businesses they built. Boom. Where 10 years ago, Tina mm. and today, they're sitting in the money. Today, if you look at the most valuable startups across Africa, who would you looking at? Jumia, Kenya, 
Paystack, Nigeria, Flutterwave, Nigeria, and I could just keep going. Mm. And in that list of 10, there's maybe one South African, that's Yoko. And somewhere in the top 20, maybe top 30, um, Naledi's business, or Aisha's business, mm. Sweep South. That's it. I sit in the venture forums, my guy. I see the ideas coming. Mm. We're not building. Now, here's what it means today. Today, it means Siasega because we say our country is more beautiful, blah, 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 blah. Sure. But what is the point of you living in a country more beautiful where you don't, you're not creating the economic resources to enjoy that beauty? Yeah. And so what will happen, as is happening already, is that those nations, because they have had their bounds, that was my point. Sure. So the average young person growing up in Nigeria, I'm there often. Mm. The average young person growing up in Nigeria is not waiting for any government grant mm. because they know it's not coming. Sure. They're not waiting for it. They're not waiting for any government scheme for to fund their business. Mm. That's why I'm a computer, not by a shire. Because when you business plan like a little humble, you see for your tell man. Any business plan like a little nothing is an amplage, you think Benjamin Alexa. Go get customers. That's where the money is. That's why I'm a shire. And I speak from experience, yeah. right? I, so people that I went, when I started interacting with them, I was like, whoa, the hustle spirit here is unreal. Sure. It's like you go to Nigeria, my guy. You will never just walk. You will, if you are in mainland, yeah. you can't just walk from one street corner to another street corner. I'm going to like things or something. Sure. Last year, I clear my own zaganja. Any money to pay? Say kamela pay anu keep on my pamphlet. Sure. We are going to say when the bank will fully podcast. Bega to when zan. Sure. Right. And then in 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 ten years time, mm. Penn is now the Joe Rogan of Africa. And I sure. speak that upon your life, right? Thank you so much. Penn is now the Joe Rogan. It's a manifesto. Amen. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, Penn has got this immense wealth. Mm. And the guy who was sitting next to you in the bank saying we are flying your wins on, sure, is now coming to you going in for downward to get up. Yeah. Ziakal. Because the mindset needs to shift and change. Mm. So, you know, I know like we said a lot, but for me, that's the, that, for me, if I'm honest, that's my main frustration with us. It's almost as if we refuse to see the power right of, in front of us. The power of travel. And, you know, you, you need to tell people something like Uksuga from a rural village in South Africa to a Joburg to feel that hustle spirit. Go to Nigeria, go to New York. Mm. So that's the power of travel and mm. immersing yourself in spaces where there are high performance people, which is one of the things I've heard about Dubai now, because I spoke to a yeah, mate yeah, yeah. who's currently in Dubai and I asked him about Silicon Valley. He's like, at some point, Silicon Valley was the place. He says, in his opinion, high powered people, people with money looking for ideas are currently there. And in I wanted Dubai? to ask you now, the intelligent young people in South Africa, when we speak about watching this thing bounce, bounce, hit the ground and bounce back and how we need to make noise. Do we need to be going into exile, into spaces that have a lot of resources, making noise from out there and trying to accumulate those resources so that when it crashes and it bounces back, we're ready to come back and build? There is a portion of that happening already. That's why, you know, Ovos are now sitting with the head office. You know, that's at the DIFC in Dubai. Mm. That's exactly why. Should, should the rest of us be trying to look into stuff like that? I would definitely. Who's going to be educating kids on just some of the companies you mentioned that people don't even know exist on the continent? If we know in miseducation is funded, who's going to try and help Uvusi, who struggles with hear you. chasing information I hear you. to plant those seeds so that it's easier for them? So it's a very good question. And I think where we have to appreciate each other, and it's actually where I think you and I both have been fairly poor in terms of how we have... And when I say you and I, I don't, I mean, not only you and I specifically, yeah. but also the centers where you and I exist is sure. where we've been fairly poor is in creating a coordination of efforts. Yeah. If I opened to you today, my Rolodex in the Middle East, sure, we could flip you up 10x, impact, scale, access yeah. like this, like this. Sure. And I wouldn't have to do the work as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, that's what's going to, this bridge we need to create. Yeah. There are some who must stay, hold the fort, educate, build, do what you're doing, mass evangelize. Sure. And then there are others on the other end who must go, look, you know, I'm in the business of creating wealth and, and, and accumulating capital, but I see you. Sure. And I'm going to, right? I had a conversation with a um, very wealthy friend of mine. You, you know him, but I, I won't mention his name. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have his permission to. I don't know any wealthy people except Vusi. Who's uh, officially. 
who's a, you know, he's a, he's a Jewish Zionist. And he was talking to me about how much of his money he sends to Israel. Yeah. And man, I was like, what? Like it's, it's, it's telephone directory numbers. Yeah. It's like, why do you do that? He says, because we as Jews understand that there are some who must man and protect, as they call it, the homeland. Mm. And those of us who are sent out into the exiles of the world yeah. to build the banks, the pharmaceutical companies, sure. the retail companies, the, the chains, the mass chains, the media we, companies, we must send them the resources. Yeah. But they're completely aligned on what the mission is. And I think that's going to be the need for our generational mission. Now, it won't be a popular mission mm. because in the degrade are people who are enjoying the degradation. 100%. Right. There are people sitting on and watching this thing go wrong and going, mm. and you must understand that when you try to hold the fort and educate, and you're not going to be liked. And, and sadly, the masses are too eager to hate you than to understand you. So they will hate you first. Two quick questions. I don't know how much more time you, you have for us since you're such a busy man. I took the day, man. You, you said, you know. <laughs> Jeez, thanks, bro. <laughs> do you understand why so many people, and look, you spoke about being misunderstood. Why so many, do you understand the yes. mindset of why so many people call you a scam artist? Yes. Motivational speakers just blow a, a lot of hot air. Mm. That's the first question. The second one being, are, are you comfortable speaking about your wealth, your money? Because there's a there's a follow up question from that. Uh, so let, let's 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 discuss them. And to the extent to which I'm not, I'll let you know. Okay. So yes, I understand the scam artist thing. Do you understand it? Do yes. you understand the psychology of average people? Ah, my motivational speakers. Yes. Yes. They yes. always lie to us. Yes. A grain of rice. I started with a grain of yeah. rice today. I own testing. Yeah. <laughs> I started with a teaspoon. Now I have a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so all of are going to make us sell our parents. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, I, I do understand it. Um, so first, you know, at the beginning of this, to arc back to where we started, I spoke about public speaking and the technical nature of the craft, yeah. right? So I didn't define myself as a motivational speaker. Sure. Y'all did. Okay. I'm a public speaker. But because of how the world understands things, right, any poet who rhymes over a beat is now called a hip-hop artist. Boom. That's it. And and so here's, let me tell you, when you call a Vusitembe why what you've done. Mm. You take a poet who rhymes over a beat, you call him a hip hop artist, mm. and then say he must therefore be a thug, a gangster, and a murderer. Boom. And you create that trail of logic with one second of thought. Yeah. Right? I'm fascinated when people say I'm a scammer, because for you to say that first, you would need not know who I am and how long I've done been around. Right? Yeah. Just call around, man. It's like, pick up, don't, don't be lazy. Pick up mm. your phone and phone around and ask about me. Sure. Right. Um, so that's the first comment. The second comment is, it, it's curious to me how people who have the least to be scammed from want to make the most noise about being scammed. Openly <sighs> Malzaba, and you're like, you've never even given me two cents. So, mautu vosu scamile. Konju namali nengzo itat. Enangik teleli nyabu. Sure. Sure. Right. And the question, the sub question there is actually this. This is the real question. Mm. If you see the scam artist, just show me the scam. Facts. Because I haven't seen the scam yet. Yeah. And if it is, I'm trying to see who's running it. Mm. People watch my masterclasses that I did online and go, see, he's scamming people. Those were free. I took my time mm. that I could have been spending at home with my three beautiful kids. Yeah. And I came and spent it in a room with young entrepreneurs who were asking questions where I felt I could help. Isono Samis panel was that I invited guys with cameras and I said record it so that we can show it to others so if they have the same questions they can see the answers yeah that was it and all of a sudden people went who does he think he is anyway you know so those people went why is he even hosting a master class he's not the wealthiest South African I never said I was mm. he's not the wealthiest black I didn't say that either mm. he doesn't employ the most black people I didn't say that I did mm. but why don't you get the wealthiest black to host a master class orcs yeah, don't, don't come to me and tell me about the guy you bumped into at Conca driving the latest Ferrari SF90 and he yeah. should be hosting a masterclass. Ask him to host it. Do you know why he won't host it? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because within 30 minutes of that, you would realize he's all flow and no substance. Yes. You would realize he's all connection and no content. 
you would realize that if it wasn't for the people he can dial on that tablet that he uses as a phone. <laughs> Why are you speaking about a specific person? Right. That guy wouldn't have that wealth. Yeah. That's what you'd realize. The only reason you don't like me is because I've taken the little I have, mm. opened it up and said, hey, yo, that's it. If you want to learn how valuation works today, go YouTube, Vusi Tempe by Valuation. It's a full video on it. That's it. It's on assignment was that I took information you would have gone to school for, shared mm. it for free, and people who did not understand the value of that information mm. then went, he's scamming us. Those master classes were for free. I didn't get paid for that. Mm. Guys go and watch it and they go, yeah, but at the end it says an association with Capitec. No, that was me showing goodwill to Usubu so my brother, who at the time was the CMO of Capitec. Yeah. We had just done a campaign and I said, yo, to thank you, I'm going to put your logo at the back of these master classes so folks go, it's all good. Sure. They didn't pay me for that. They didn't I'm, pay you. Usubu so come on. No, no, no. I mean, Usubu Siso is a brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That was Puzza Man. Oh, don't no, do I'm that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Spuda's a brother. Spuda, you know, Spuda. If, if it wasn't for Spusi, so my campaign with Capitec wouldn't have happened. Sure. Right. And, and that's That's a beautiful story, by the way, for people that don't know, because obviously Capitec, I'm a boo, no student Posh Mafia. Yeah, I tell you. You're literally saying it's a boy of mine that I was working Spoo there. Spoo brought me in. I went to the head office of Capitec. I met the entire, all the bosses. Sure. And let me tell you why Spoo's a change agent. Because then he leaves. He goes to African Bank. Yeah. And what does he do? He goes and finds this amazing artist called Ricky Rick. <sighs> Come on, Spoo. And pulls him in. Come on, Spoo. Nobody talks about Spoo. But that's why you're here, to speak about him right. and, and to also encourage, because, you know, we keep speaking about these big brands. I always say when they're like, oh, the brands are saying for their reputation. I'm like, there's no weird brand. They are young, no. normally black kids sure. sitting there preempting that, oh, this is not good for the brand. And they're the ones that have the ability to transform and be change agents. So shout out to people like your mate. And 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 by the way, he is a plethora of others, right? There yeah. is him. I think about guys like Greg at Jägermeister and what sure. he's done for the Jägermeister brand in South Africa. The number of Ama Piano artists Greg has put on, right? Where he has literally sponsored these guys and sure. they're doing amazing stuff. We need to celebrate guys like that. We do. But, you know. Yo, those guys are fighting big battles, man. Shout out to all of them. And, and you know, uh, so for me, as you know, I have a long history in corporate. Yeah. I know what those battles are. In my 20s, I was in corporate, Yeah. right? I sat across the table. I sat across the table with a Lopsha and a Van Tonder and Van der Merwe, mm. and I was the one going, eh, hey, hey, this is not how this demographic does things. Sure. It's not how this marketplace exists. We need sure. to do it differently. So I know the constant clash that that exists yeah. today, right? Um, just the way our people were represented in ad agencies 20, 30 years ago and the arc of that story. Yeah. It's because there were change agents in the room going, why in Jalo Manenza ma advert for Rabantaba Miyama Fanelis Jive? Sure. So Jive was like, I'm a meza. Why? You're making an ad about, you know, you know, I don't know, female um, sanitary pads. Yeah. And they are dancing. What? But sanitary pads, no Jive, go to Slang and Aganja. Kanjani. This tank salama big beans, Siatula, Slang and Aganja, and Lizin. Sure. Right, and it's because there was an archetype, an avatar of who black people are, yeah. singing, dancing, and that has that's how our story was told. Yeah. So, so, so I go back to your question, the scam artist thing. Mm. I've even given up trying to answer that. I'm like, you need to believe whatever you want to believe. Please don't ever give up. I I know the power of propaganda, and as boring as it is, you must always be like, I'm not. What? what that's my opinion. Mm. Sorry, because I know it's very noisy out there, and someone will be hearing you answer that for the first time. That's why I, I have some of the energy, but it's not good for the mind. And it's very distracting. And, and, and also, you know, so here's, here's, here's why I stopped answering that question. It was because I realized to your point that I wasn't being called a scam artist. Your mistake. Yeah. I was being called a scam artist because I started saying things that people didn't like. Yeah. And I started doing things that people didn't like. And the only way to discredit the effort is to discredit the person making it. Boom. So then I go, but hold on. You know, in a few weeks' time, I'm doing a, um, I'm on tour, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got a um, Middle East, Middle East, North Africa, and Europe tour, mm -hmm. sold out. I'm doing a masterclass in Dubai, 600 people. Why must remind me why I must answer you, who wants to come to my free masterclass mm -hmm. at my time, mm -hmm. my expense, my team, my resources. Mm -hmm. When I can be over there getting paid and appreciated for the same work, they will love me. You call me a scam artist for it. Now, here's what's curious. 
Is it not curious to you that the poorest nations are the ones who call knowledge merchants scam artists? Hmm. Isn't it curious to you that the poorest people are the ones who find no value in being educated? They would far rather pay for the entertainment. When I run a workshop or a session in New York, if I run a workshop or a session in Texas, as I did last year, mm. people don't squabble at my fee. They pay the fee. They come into the room. They sit down. They've got a notepad and they write it down. Yeah. And somebody actually, sure. That's how they value knowledge. Here, you say it's free. Come. Nah. Nah. It's a scam. Yep. You know, I've seen something similar in this country when it, and at least in my personal experience where you get linked to certain well-off white people. Because <laughs> I think maybe the Indians move smarter so they won't know who you're chilling with. And it becomes that thing of yeah. these people who are not even my target market. I'm trying to speak to you guys because I realize you need this. They are rich people. Yes. Never call you. And then other people, let's say a Jewish businessman is calling you to be like, I see value in your content. Yes. You can teach me something, I can use it. And then tomorrow you get called names and you're like, I'd love to be called by wealthy, influential black people because that's who we should be working with. But yes. it's never. Not gonna it's not going to happen. And, and the reason it's not going to happen, Penn, is very simple. is because we are first generation, so we don't yet have the mindset of accumulation. Yeah. You know, the, mas the, mas the massive shift for me, I must tell you, when I started my growth fund, I, I, I seeked out this guy. I was a hero of his work for years. Yeah. There were two guys I, I sought out. Two. The one. You, you still have this hunger to meet people not, like a groupie. I have two mentors today. Okay. To this day. I have people I call and go, I'm stuck here, man. What do I need to do with this? Mm. To this day. Right? The one was this guy who'd created a company making uh, hair stuff mm. for people who wanted to make dreadlocks. Sure. Jabu Stone. I remember meeting with Jabu Stone. I used to drive a Toyota Run X in Sasaleka Sewadville. Hey, so maybe Nami one day, because you got the you got the right brand. I had a Toyota Run X RSI, six gears forward, first generation. It was red in color, right? Sure. And I used to work out at the Virgin Active in Benoni. Mm. And Saturday in Pumichimi, I'm driving through Benoni town. And I get to Tom Jones Street. And man. There was this beautiful burgundy BMW M6. Sure. I pull up in front of the car. Don't see him bringing fig. Here's this guy standing there talking to a friend of his. They grew up together. Mm. He's got dreadlocks. He's just chatting. It's Jabu Stone. Sanbona babangwazi kamala muvos. I said to him. That's so important what you did there. I said to him. Jabu and I connected. Yeah. Right. He was the first I did that with. Years later, I'm working at a company called Metro Cash and Carry. I'm a GM. I'm about to make, you know, ops director. Isn't it? Sure. I buy a BMW 645CI. Got to seven. I'm that guy. Black, burgundy interior. <laughs> Don't worry. It's coming. Black, burgundy interior, sunroof. You know, 20s. Yeah. Yes, and a life, Jit. I find out that there's a, a BE structure that Medcash had done a, a deal with. Yeah. So I go, who's in that structure? They say, this guy called Beggy Villagas. Who's he? CEO of Easy Gas. I go, I got to meet him. Mm. Teach me. Shepard. I go, who's he? CEO of, got to meet him. Teach me. Jürgen. Who's he? He's the founder of Africa Renaissance Holdings. So I go and Google it. This guy is like the accountant to Tabumbeg. Small Jewish guy, nondescript. You'll never mm. find out about him in the papers. But he's there. Mm. To this day, he calls me every year on my birthday and we talk. So Mabogo Vosi, and you say scam. China, you're missing, you're missing all the chapters. I'm a, I'm accumulative to this day. So then I meet another guy on the board. This guy started a company called Zico. When he first started it, he went and one of the unions became the initial investor, LP in the in the investment arm, mm. Zongo Investment Company. Who's he? Sandile. Who's this guy? Google. Yeah. Go. Bab Zongo. 
sat with him in his office. At the time, he had an office on Ravonia. Mm. Go and meet with him. Teach me. To this day. To this day. What I do, and this is my cheat trick. Mm. If there's a level I want to get to, I study the masters. Yeah. Then I seek them out and I go, teach me. 48 Laws of Power. That's Robert it. Robert Greene. That's it. First, never outshine them. Ubaba is Ubaba Uputi. Put Sandy Lezunga owes me a sit down, man. Yeah, man, that guy. Two, three is... times his PA is. Ah. La la la. Kshuti. Genentlo Nipa Kodo Mina for Uzong. Because of not only who he is, yeah. but how he is. Yeah. He's got this incredible grace about him. I mean, the incredible success God has blessed him with sure. today. People forget. Thank you so much, Devza. You know, people forget a few years ago, they'd written that guy off. Yeah. They'd written him off. And if you think about his beautiful estate place today, Zunguness. And, oh, jeez, I've seen that. The things he's doing now and the owning of... And of um, Amazulu. Amazulu. Football club. Guys, guys, what else do we need, right? So, so the other guy I sought out when I started my venture firm, I was like, you know, every time... I talk to people about black entrepreneurs. Yeah. There's this name that keeps coming up. Richard Maponya. Boom. I need to find this guy. And you put it out in the universe and you leave it. And one day, young lady calls me, Tulisa. Smart, smart young lady. She says, I'm calling from the Richard Maponya Foundation. And I go, God cannot work this way. Come on. She says, Umkulu would like to meet with you. That man held my hand literally until the week of his passing. Mm. He held it. When there were questions, when I was like, I'm trying to break into this industry. It was like, no, no, no. I know that you need to approach it this way. Mm. Right. The person who taught me about the difference between a coach and a sponsor was Richard. He was like, you've got coaches in your life. You don't have a sponsor. So what's sure. a sponsor? He says, a, a sponsor is the person who speaks about you when you're not in the room and the conversation with people of power is being had. Yeah. So he said, go build relationships with sponsors. He says, you're not going to break into, you know, asset management and allocating people's money unless you've got a sponsor in the room. Yeah. And so I say that only to say, this is the problem in my mind with this new brand of... <laughs> Quasi journalists who mm. practice this tabloid thing. Yeah, it's new and it's it's because of social media. It's and disgusting. Chasing views and things. It's, so it's it's you're chasing views and you're opening a channel and you're talking about li- somebody's life. You are literally mm. destroying what took decades to build. Sure. And here's the irony of that: is then you're going to turn around and say, "Why are there no black this sure. and no black that?" But you were part of the mob. You, in fact, you were at the front leading it yeah so you know so so for me my man that's been my grace is everywhere i go everywhere that, I that go. thing is important pharrell was saying to kanye west it's a clip on genius doc, the documentary on netflix he phrases it in a certain way but he's essentially saying i think it's steve jobs stay young stay stay foolish stay hungry stay, stay foolish hungry, stay foolish but yeah. pharrell is like don't ever stop doubt like don't ever get to a point where or always doubt yourself but it's the mindset of don't ever be ever that big. Always be willing to humble yourself. Absolutely. I've, I've seen Pete Diddy sitting with, I Ray don't know if it was Ray Dalio, Dalio Ray, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay-Z sitting with Warren, Warren Buffett. Buffett. It's yeah. always be willing to humble yourself. And I like the, the Jewish reference because there's a channel, it was called Kosher Money. It's now called I Living, Living Lechaim yeah, yeah, yeah. with Eli Langer. And one of the rabbis that comes there was speaking about his success and how he makes sure that he always writes a, a note. He's like, I know we do use technology and those things, but those little things where... I got a letter. I never get letters. I got a letter from this guy to say happy birthday. I know it's your Amazing. birthday. Those things have an impact. And one of my favorite entrepreneurship stories on, on the continent is a gentleman by the name of Alexander Thomas Pyan. Mm. Thompson Pyan, I think. Mm. From America, one of his elders was South American politician. He went to China, learned Mandarin at night, learned import, export, was picked out by some New York billionaire. I mm. see what you're doing come and help me run. They started doing telecoms around the world. He eventually stumbled upon Angola. When he got to Angola, he was like, this is fertile earth. No one has done anything here. Mm. I'm coming to blow it wide open. Mm. Became wealthy, he loved Angola, he settled. And he spoke about one of his wins was this person at the harbor that he needed favor with. And Mm. he couldn't get through to this guy. Mm. He found out that the guy was um, going to get married. He was somewhere in Europe. Uh, picked out a very expensive dress for this guy's <laughs> wife, took it to the guy. He wasn't asking for anything, gave him the dress. 
And he's like, that, that little thing, out of everyone who's maybe willing to bribe him, whatever, he'll never forget that. It's power. That I, I got that. For, so sometimes we forget the little things, and it's that. The day a Jabu Stone, as an example, has the ability to influence something major. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. maybe he's done things, maybe he says things, maybe people call him whatever, but in Kumbulu Mfana we run X, above. Coming to me as at least, Sanborn Ababi Kamala Movus. And for that reason, you can give me a hundred million, but this is the guy that I'm going to choose because of sure. those things. And I think that's that's pretty powerful. You know, the 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 Jews, in the Yiddish language, there's this word, Fargin. Mm. It's a beautiful word. And when I started spending time in the community, yeah, you, know, you go to the shul, you're at Shabbat, you're like, this is, this is, Yes. They, they come at it differently. But this word, Fargin, and here's what it means. It means that if we are in a community and you're doing something, yeah. even if somebody outside the community can do it better, cheaper, and faster, we buy from you. And when you get it wrong, we come to you. Mm. So you got this, this, this wrong, fix it. Then we buy again. That's us. It's called Fargin. Go and look it up. Um, so, no. so how did, how did. the reason that's important mm. is because now you've got to understand our psychology. So what do we do? You start something and you sell. We buy it. Mm. Then we go on social media and go, Sure. Yeah. Then, we, then we're the same people that go, but why is black wealth not growing? Sure. Right. I think I said this, I did this masterclass and I know you want to say something. So let me just finish. No, no, cool. Yeah, cool. It's like I said, I, I had a masterclass. I'll never forget. It was in Cape Town and I said something and the whole thing blew up and became, you know, flammable. Like almost most things, what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. And I said to, I said in this masterclass, I said, apartheid didn't lose. Apartheid won. Yeah. But they didn't lose. Not only did it won, it's still winning. The project of apartheid was not only about the exploitation of the many for the few. It wasn't just about making black people believe they were inferior. The more insidious project in apartheid its most successful outcome. And I use the word successful for a lack of a better one. So mm. don't get touched with that. Is that apartheid was there to convince black people that none amongst them was worth anything. Kungako today, isi tasum tomyam, umtomyam, Umundozo tili zin kampani umtom yam. Umtom yam. Umundozo kfreima. Umtom yam. Umundozo kfage chele. Ngen zondo. Umtom yam. Umundozo kmambe ngen tlizi yati sobon gutu yopele lapi. Sure. Umtom yam. To this day. And so all, almost all of the wealthy black friends I know, they'll call me and go, what are you doing? Leave these people alone. Mm. A friend of mine said something the other day. What, why do you think we leave the township? Yeah. Why? Because I don't want to drive in and drive out every day. Yeah. And so, in was a gate as Portugal, because Zamba is somewhere else, right? Yeah. But Akai, it's just, it's the way it is. And so my fascination is with groups and communities that have suffered. And then when they bounce, mm. it's unbelievable. Because I think if as black people, we could learn that, yeah. we would be unstoppable. The apartheid project was about that in South Africa. Mm. The colonization project was about that in the rest of Africa. Sure. Right. The reason there was a, there's an issue between a Kikuyu and a this in Kenya, the colonizers told them that shit. Yeah, and so, and so when the colonizer removes himself, right, the one tribe says to the other, no, but it can't be you. Sure, it must be me. 
it's our inability to practice fargin to go yazin man who pen started a company making cars mm. hey azambi zona hey is a slow man na magera ithu clash ya phuka ya bon akana ne set nerve but tell it department of home affairs to place an order for 100000 of those cars because that's first iteration yeah we don't do that mm. and then we wonder why certain populations move forward why sure. certain countries move forward if you had the privilege i did 15 years ago is the first time i traveled to china mm. you cannot compare the automotive prowess of china then to today sure but that's because the chinese government backed chinese founders building companies in the automotive sector as they have done in technology with huawei and several mm. others and so we think the reason you're using a xiaomi or a huawei is just because the chinese are amazing no it's it's in large part because they practice fargin yeah imaliabo circulates ngabo gubo and they don't need you to be perfect they just mm. need you to be teachable hmm. and take constructive criticism and take constructive criticism so they don't destroy when you take initiative they don't destroy they don't destroy they do not destroy i remember gaten mckenzie saying he intentionally does this thing of praising black businesses this was a couple of years ago he intentionally praises black businesses loudly and when he's not happy he intentionally goes to the side to say look i'm not happy with this maybe i'll support you maybe i won't but i just want you to know but i'm not going to do it publicly to what you're saying precisely naval ravikant is probably hmm. one of the smartest guys i've seen on the internet yes yeah, sure and my brother and i've had a debate about it because i think joe rogan is pretty dope but i told him the fact that naval for me is willing to challenge joe who's got a, a vast range of stuff of knowledge, in a, yeah. in the little bit of yeah in the few clips i've seen already is scary but he quotes nasim talib and i don't remember the exact quote people can go look it up but i wanted to speak about this thing of specifically the jewish and in south africa the indian muslim and maybe the white afrikaner because i think ais khanwat is still the highest selling magazine sure afrikaans fiction is still the highest selling afrikaans cinema makes a lot of money as an example but this idea when you speak about democracy dictatorship meritocracy that some of these people they'll be like no i don't believe in socialism and and it's like but some of them practice socialism yes in their spaces yes they'll be like i'm not a socialist to strangers they it's capitalism wins and democracy and merit but ekaya it's social in ganzam will get backed sure they'll go first absolutely. they'll get the funding even if their business is dog shit absolutely so some of these people that claim they believe in free market only way it suits their absolutely. agenda absolutely and, and so story. i think that's that's powerful the crabs in the bucket uh, i think pearl tusi also said something about as soon as you successful leave and you spoke about this i think it was on etv speak about the psychology of what dark and and how we hate each other and we don't put each other on so we can succeed as a collective and how we define success as how far away you can move away yeah, from yeah, your yeah. people yeah, yeah, yeah. versus other groups are i can be as wealthy as i want but if i kaya we're not wealthy i haven't made it absolutely sizo hmm. jomo uh of which uh, you know we we always enjoy it when you guys are at each other's throats because we love mobs and cancel culture uh part of the videos that have trended on on my channel were the ones where i was like the fascination for me is it seems uvusi tembegwa is first generation yes first generation wealth is building his and usizo jomo is maybe second third and he's a beneficiary of his father grandfather whatever and i'm like it's interesting this clash of it seems like usizo is an issue of first generation and first generation is never pretty and people that understand what it takes to build the They'll tell you scam artists and the, you stole my money and 100% you know 100% uh, and on the other side a voice is saying yeah but sizwe it's not like you didn't have some privileges and i'm seeing first generation almost arguing and fighting with uvusi would love to be his children to be sizwe hmm. one day and uvusi is kind of fighting with his grandfather but people are saying you stole money and and it's like no it's this is kind of how it works but we just happen to be similar ages hmm. and and your thoughts around i know at some point we'd like to see you guys sit down chat find common ground yeah that's not going to um, fucking happen fuck him no not on camera no 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 i mean anybody who okay anyways let me let me, let me say it this way right sure 
I moved past that point when he made it personal and came after my kids. Okay, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. and and kids and family and, yeah, yeah. and partners. No, no, no. Are when, when, he did, when he did that, no, we 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 are no longer at a. Amachi takabe nizozula. Sure. No, inda ba matota le. Okay. Sazula la bokdala, dala. Okay. Ngeshwa. He hasn't proven himself beyond what he's been given. And I know one thing about the world, boy. Mm. Cycles. Yeah. Let's go, Levil. Kulega. It's summer now. Winter's coming. We'll see what you're made of. Do your thing. Do your thing. Sure. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Yeah. All of us. Cycles. Sure. Give it time. Give it time. So, <clears throat> let me say a few things there, right? Um, Outside of speaking about him. Just the ideology. I mean, I think... So it, he's actually been an interesting little like blip in my life because it spent, took me a while studying that. Okay. And st- I'm, so I'm the guy who I try to extract myself from a situation and go, why did this unfold the way it didn't unfold? Sure. A lot of people don't know actually the, the genesis. Okay. I want to tell you first the genesis. Okay. And, and then I'll tell you kind of my reading of it. Okay. So years ago, you remember there was a, a taxi strike. That was, that that was one whole, of my popping videos, boy. That was the whole thing. So most people, again, let's go back. Think of Vusi Timbaba just gets up and says, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Demi Demi, by the way. Sure. He and I follow each other. We chat like on Instagram. Sure. I, I love the guy. So people think that's what I do. Yeah. There are layers in public speaking, Chief. Mm-hmm. At the top is something we call a halo speaker, a business speaker, professional speaker, inspirational, motivational, right? Okay. So when you call us speakers, you, you're trying to st- club all of us into one. Yeah. But that's okay. It's not how you guys understand it. It's cool. In my game, right, to be effective at what I do, mm-hmm. I have a full research team. That's why I can say things because I've got people whose job it is to put together the things I need to Mm. say. Do you understand? Sure. Tomorrow I'm on assignment with a client. My research team is at the office now. Now today my research team is spread. I've got two people in Dubai, two in the Philippines, one here in Joburg and one Mm. in Cape Town. I've given them different research assignments. That's why if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see I'll run a thread on AI and how AI is changing. I'm not sitting there doing, I've got a team doing this. Sure. So, Ubafo. Um, Can you give the context of the taxi thing? I'm I, going there. I actually remember it was quite an, it's a valuable conversation yeah. outside of. I'm, go- I'm going there. I'm going there. Sure. So, Ubafo, um, as I understand it, yeah. tweeted something. Sure. Right. I get, this is before Google Docs, yeah. an email from my research team with a Word document. Going, hey, salient facts about this strike, post a video now. So I go sure. and I check the salient facts. I go, cool, go online, post a video, and that's that. Yeah. I'm going to do drama. So oh, somebody on Twitter. Dr- dr- so somebody on Twitter goes to him and says, yo, did you see Vusi posted a video? And some of the facts are some of the facts you've posted as yeah. it appears on your thread. Yeah. Now here's why it's important. Those facts were public knowledge. Mm. It's not like he went and found researchers who went and dug up sure. something as primary evidence. They sure. were was secondary data. We were all pulling it from the same place. If sure. you and I read the same financial report, we're going to get the same data. Yeah. Right? Leave it. That's the Friday the video gets posted. Sure. I get on a flight. I was, I was flying somewhere. And the following morning, I remember I had to fly back. They fuel up the jet. I was flying private. I fly back. Come again. on, Vusi, man. Puma lap, puma lap. Come and on, I take land, it easy. You know, I land, the jet lands, whatever. Don't make us George Floyd, Baba. Ni wa fao nix. And as I land, right, I see on my Twitter timeline, mm. this guy's going off at me. Sure. And you're trending. Uba is like, I know, he stole my facts. I'm like, so I see this. Mm. And, then, and then I reply to him. I'm like, this is just patently not true. Yeah. Right. And then he, this is where the fight started. He sure. then replies and says, it's not the first time you've done it. Yeah. So I go, okay. Where else have I done it? Sure. Now here's for me what the issue was then and is today. This is why in my mind, I've got no respect for the guy. Zero respect. Sure. And in Tlone Pogmena, has nothing to do with Mali, Nange Minyaga. Umuntu Tlone Pogutuba, Upata Banga Bandu Ganja. Yes. This past week, when the whole apartheid thing was happening. Yeah. I was at the office. I work late. Sometimes I leave the office at 11 midnight. 
Oliver Dixon calls me from SAFM. Mm. O says to me, dude, I just saw your tweet. Do you have a sec? I said, for you, every day. Sure. He and I spent 30 minutes on the phone. I was late for the gym that evening because O phoned me and said, I don't agree with you and here's why. Sure. Do you understand? Sure. Well, Bafo has my number. So I'm landing, I'm getting this tweet. I'm going, I'm a bit confused here. Mm. It's not like we're estranged to one another. Sure. If Penn feels I said something that was yeah. his information, Penn, Sure. has the permission to phone me sure. and say, Jit, I just saw this. Mm. What's going on? Sure. So I, so I then realized he had no interest in resolving anything. Yeah. He did then what has been his entire modus operandi. That's why he fought with AKA and Ricky Rick and Nasty C. Right? We're talking about a guy with respect, as far as I know, who's been on radio for over a decade. Mm. I don't know how many awards he's got being on radio. So maybe before you tell us about our business, you should just be number one at yours. Jeez. Let's start there. Right. So you're busy out here questioning people's credentials, mm. but the only credential you stand on is right. Who are you flexing to? But I want to come to where this issue comes from. Because when we understand this issue as black people, mm. we're unstoppable. So the call doesn't come in. Sure. Next thing I'm seeing him saying stuff, I lose my shit. My wife was pregnant, I'll never forget, mm. with my youngest. I go into my car, record a video, and I address him. Sure. Because, because I'm going to you, don't, you don't want to, so I'll address you. Sure. That's not the way it's done, my guy. You've got my number. Mm. You pick up the phone and you phone. Sure. If it was an earnest um, feeling that he felt like I'd taken something of his, yeah. you pick up the phone and you say, hey man, when's our landla? Mm. But the point is this, in his character, and people don't need to understand this. Mm. That's why he, he's an entertainer. Okay. In his character is to create conflict. Go online and find any time I've ever started an issue with him about anything. Mm. Stuff when stuff was written about him in the papers. You'll never hear Vusu going, see? Sure. I'm too busy. But things going on. Sure. Yet every time something is being said about me, he's in it. He jumps on. So now you got to ask yourself, who's obsessed with who here? Sure. Because it clearly ain't me being obsessed with him. I couldn't even tell you what's happening with the guy. Sure. I don't know what station he's on now. I don't know what show he's I don't know. Yeah. Right? So I'm watching that whole movie happen. Yeah. And then years later, I get to meet to Anele. We do. I was on Anele's show a few times. Anele Mdota. That's right. Very sharp, by the way, Anel. Incredibly mm. sharp. Incredibly sharp. People need to look beyond her ability as an entertainer. She's sure. actually very smart. And, and she says to me backstage, she's like, no, 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 Cesar's my best friend. I said, oh, okay, cool. So now you must understand, we now have two portals of connection. Sure. Right? Sure. If there was a conversation Guy wanted to have, he could have had it. Sure. He's not interested in the conversation. Sure. He is, and I said this in my very first tweet to him, and neither he nor his merry band of dum-dums understood the insult I threw at them. Mm. I said to him, he is busy entertaining the gallery of commons. When you're in theater mm. and you perform, yeah. you perform to the gallery. The VIP sit at the top, mm. at the bottom sit the commons. To this day, he's never replied to that insult because it didn't register. He was too busy being fixated with, let me flare up this light. Mm. I'm at the stage with him where I just don't feed him. The sure. fact that he's constantly the one attacking me tell, it should tell you who's above who here. That's I, all you I, need to know. I didn't want us to talk about this man. No, no, no. But, 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 but I thank want you. To, I know. I, I, see, I wanted because to. I, I you I must understand something, right? Like it's been close sure. on a decade for me. I've just been watching this guy and I'm quiet. I worry about creating platforms that add to. That's I know. Why. I know. And, and yeah. I know. But for me, it's been a decade. I hear you. Of just watching Umji. You know, I and you. sometimes. Mm. Sure. Right. And I, I will take that opportunity to do that here because this is an actual platform where one can address it sure. and it doesn't get emotional. Sure. There are people who've said, you know, it'd be interesting to watch a debate. I would never debate the guy. It wouldn't be a debate. It wouldn't also be necessary. And it wouldn't be necessary. Yeah. This creating of this confluence and collision. Now, sure. let's, so, so that gives you the history. Now let's talk a bit about why that exists. Sure. Because man, I meditated on that question. Mm. And I think he and I are a fault line of something that most black people are struggling with today. Yeah. I'll tell you what that is. 
I went to a township school called Egu Kanyeni. Mm. And uh, when I was finishing standard three, basically, like Safunda. Jeez, we're old. <laughs> standard three is grade five, children. Yeah, yeah. When Don't I get lost, keep up. When I was finishing with standard three, Ubaba moved me to a Model C school called Benoni West. And I went to, and I was, and I was going to, no, no, when I was finishing with standard two, passing for standard three. Mm. So the next day I must go to standard three. My dad goes to the school and, and they're like, no, you must take an entrance exam. Yeah. You remember those entrance exams? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I pass every single part of the exam. English, I shy, math, I shy, everything. Sure. Except Afrikaans. Hey, say. There was this lady, Mrs. Olifir. She later actually became an Afrikaans teacher. She shows me images. She says, what's this in Afrikaans? She pointed at the kitchen. Sure. And I didn't know what the kitchen <laughs> was in Afrikaans. I was like, her kitchen? <laughs> I don't know. So she was like, she was like, no, no, ah, no. You gave it a good shot, boy. Yeah. She was like, no, no, no. You can't go to grade five. It was. Jeez. Now, we're not switching from standards to grades. Sure. Not only that, but we have to move you back to grade uh, three. Hmm. I did like a standard one. But it was fine because I was in Kanyan. I was two years ahead of my okay. class anyway. So basically what had happened is I adjusted for my years. Okay. Right? So there's that generation of us. There are three generations of, you know, young South Africans today. Yeah. I'm that center generation. Mm. Those of us like Ulira, who went to a township school, yeah. then migrated sure. to a Model C school. Something interesting happened when we migrated to those Model C schools. Mm. There were these black kids whose parents owned spaza shops and taxis and butcheries mm. who went to St. Desha. Sure. And they were always the only black kid in class. Yeah. And all of a sudden they had to put up with the rest of us. <sighs> That's Caesar's problem. Caesar's problem is he was the only black kid in class. Mm. And all of a sudden he's got to put up with the rest of us. And it's not just him. Mm. He represents an entire group of young black people who come from extraordinary privilege who cannot adjust their minds to the fact that their access today is not just driven by their privilege, yeah. that they're going to have to compete. Now, I said there's three generations. Yeah, yeah. There's his, there's mine, and then there's the generation of young black kids who have only known the Model C schools. Sure. They're coming into the world of work now. Ask them to tell you about the experiences they're having at the hands of their own. Hmm. Because they come and they speak a different type of English, right? Sure. This is... Let me tell you how pervasive this is. At AKA's funeral, at the funeral, the memorial service, sure. Sim Mode, what a guy, right? Sure. Sim Mode Sim, says- Sim Dope. Sim Dope, right, right. Hey, people are gonna put you up. Hey, Sim Dope. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, guys, but, but Sim but, Dope, he's old, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I remember the song, right? Um, I'm a huge, by the way, huge AKA fan. No, AKA is my favorite ah, song. Like, yeah. like, unequaled, pro AKA, do me. Do Boom. Sure. Okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Before people come at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, Sim Dope gets up and says, like, guys, we were going on a trip to Australia. Sure. I was like, I am not AKA with cheese boys. Sure. Kwambe, Australia. When I was up, Gold Reef City trended. Sure. Because people were like, no, being a Gold Reef City. Mm. Right. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. If for Sim Dope to talk about going to Australia, is now something that people must attack. In 2023? In 2023. Because, yo, it's been a while. In my mind, yeah. I want to understand Ngamaz and Ngamzelu Baba Ga Simpiwe, right? Because sure. I've done business with him and his groups. Yeah. Incredible gentleman, Baba Kumed, sure. right? Gentloni, Pumena Ngatloni, Baba Fua Banda Badal, right? And, and across the strata. So in my mind, I'm going like, wow, you know, like St. John's, they did it. Sia Kluza, sure. incredible Sia Kluza. And the stuff Sia is doing today, people need to understand why Sia is under the radar. It's yeah. very deliberate. He's I've very actually, intentional. I've actually spoken to someone who knows him personally, and, and very, they have said it's deliberate. It's be very. It's because of this. It's this. Yeah. It's this, right? Yamaz Baba Sia. Yeah. Right. Sia went to a particular school. Sia would have gone to the the Australia trip. Sure. Now I'm trying to understand Jenga Banta Bamyam Ige Pinking. They can send their children to Australia. Sure. Why must we pull that down? Mm. Why is that an outlier? Mm. It's like, um, mama ga baba no no baga aka ngogo aswami. We're not criminals. Sure. Logo gushuti ugu zu aka aswagi gulesa school. 
babesebenza sure asebenzeni sonke bagethi mm sakhe zethi ikolo ezofana no St John's and St Stephen's and St yeah. Peter's and all of these schools and send our kids there sure so rather than say sending your child to australia is a reflection of what she's boy mm. what we should be saying is epanyas hey, what's your plan to send kids to australia chief yeah that's the conversation Yo, but we're not having that conversation. Been in a while. He's the premier of Gauteng now. I'm told so, I'm told so, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> but, you tell education. Education. Yeah, but you can tell him out of the game. But you can tell him out of the game. You've left us, Baba. So, so look, a long way to answer your question, yeah. but... It's, you matriculated at Benoni High? I'm a Benoni High boy, 2003. I need to give a shout out to my boy, Dominic Khaubepe. How do you know Doms? Uh, we were at Rhodes together, same choir. Dom with the deep voice. That's right. You know, yeah. he was literally here and I were like best mates in high school. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dom and I were in the choir together. We went from to Benoni West choir. together. Tenor. Choir was kids tenor, actually man. the shit. I know every single lyric in the Carmina Burana opera. Boom. Everything from O Fortuna to Tempus Estio Kundum. I could, all the lyrics, I know them. You know I've got a small theory about kids <laughs> that uh, cuz I did I did visual arts as well in school. Right. About kids that do art history and kids that do classical music. I've got a theory about that because I did it and my understanding and sensitivity to music, the origin, the way I view art, the way I see the infiltration of those things in the elite. Mm. Later on I got to appreciate things like philosophy because I thought philosophy was for stoners. Mm. I realized the power of those things and I wonder for some of these kids that are sent to these schools and exposed to playing piano, doing art, doing mm. classical music that you laugh at that child and that child ends up running the biggest companies 100%. and you thought it was something else can't it was something in their grooming of those 100%. softer I, i can tell you what it is right so in, in the work we do with entrepreneurs when yeah. i when i when i meet entrepreneurs who come into our firm and we're helping them scale or grow their business uh, i used to play the violin i played piano there you go welcome right. to the club shout out to our parents it's near as well seem dope nice to see dope so i still have my violin by the way and when i when i do an induction for every program so we turned our accelerator programs now called a school of scale And the reason I called it that was mm. because scale can be learned panel. Yeah. When you watch a um Whitey Bison, yeah, take over ShopRite from six stores to 140 billion in turnover. Mm. 16 million to 140 billion in turnover in the term of a single CEO. Shout out to Whitey man. Jeez, the boys. I mean, I've 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 had the privilege of interacting with him. I think I think I ShopRite agree. is the biggest retailer on the continent without question. Without question, and it's Whitey. Without People say Christo Visa, and Christo's like, "Hey, it's that guy." Not yeah, me. Whitey was the operator. Yeah, right. Whitey was the operator. Whitey was the guy. People don't know this, but in, if you remember that violence of the '90s, the political violence, mm. when a lot of the competitors of Shoprite were running from the townships, he ran in. Come on, right? He ran in. At last time I checked, the 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 largest score, the largest store by revenue per square meter in the Shoprite group. Last I checked, it might have changed since. Uh, was in Toyando in Venda. That's impressive. The guy built and and his whole thing was you got to build the business for the people yeah. as he says it. Vizi, you build it for the people my friend. Uh, and what an amazing guy. Yeah. You know, I said to him so how 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 are your meetings with Christo? Yeah, you know Christo is a lawyer. Always <laughs> telling you no, you know. <laughs> But Shop, shop They've got guy. such an amazing relationship because they were complementary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The one is an operator, ruthless driver. Yeah. The other one is like a strategic thinker, more tactician, etc. Yeah. And and so I've had the incredible privilege of meeting guys like Whitey Basson, Carlos de Santos who made Metro Cash and Carry the mighty metro that it was. Why I had the privilege of working for and phenomenal other guys, Ivan Saltzman who's built what Discam is today mm. and several others I could just keep name dropping at this. And I kept asking myself the question, what do they know that we don't? Yeah. And I realized the more time I spent with them, scale is a science. It's mm-hmm. not an art. Right. So if we want to scale our businesses as a people, mm-hmm. it's science. You take the science, you'll do the work. Yeah. You were talking about, you know, classical music, etc. So when I meet our first when I meet every intake and we're busy with an intake now, I always go to that meeting with my my violin. Mm-hmm. And I say this to them: say, when someone learns to play an instrument, they don't get it right the first time. Sure, they fail. In the beginning, they fail every day, but they don't stop. They keep putting in the work, doing the hours, and then one day they don't fail at all. That's what entrepreneurship is. It's failing every day, over 
and over and over. And then one day, it gets about you a bob. Yes, yes. Now, to arc back to our people, because we grew up in a country where, you know, you want retail, pick and pay is the comparison. You want banking, F and B is the comparison. You want construction, Murray and Roberts is the comparison. We don't know that if a Penwell starts a pick and pay, we must be kind to him and patient as he fails. Mm. Because one day, he's not going to fail at all. I'm a born to understand that. Yeah. Mm. It's because in that little enclave, they create a safe environment, a cocoon, for you to fail. Yeah. I know guys who are startup founders in Stellenbosch who would be trending today if mm. people knew what was happening with their businesses. Sure. But the community protects them. It says fail again and again and again. Tomorrow, a person is built our insurance or King Price or yeah. this. And then we sit and complain and say, where are the black insurance companies? Mm. Right. I will tell you now, Penn. The liberation of black people is up to black people. It's not up to anybody else. Mm. If just we changed how we are with each other, that would change everything. Saying Kulumela, the person of Shale Lokshin, who must make a decision today, go take his single. And there's a store to your right, owned by Mundo Ngaseo Nwagin, and a store to your left. And the one to your left is more expensive. Yeah. Get him in Ague. You go to the one to your left. So if we as a people have proven our ability to be communal in suffering, mm. the verdict is out on whether or not we can be communal in prosperity. That's us. Let's shut it there. Vusi, thank you so much for coming through. When you started speaking about Stellenbosch, I actually had forgotten. And I hope when we sit again, we'll discuss your experience at Silicon Cape. Yeah. I started thinking of Justin Stanford, Vinny Lingham, the guys at Paul Ruiz Gymnasium with their 100 million rand old boys fund, great college. And like there's so much we can unpack and so many stories in this country that ordinary people don't even know they need to hear. Yanni Muton, PSG, Man. they funded Pioneer Foods or they took over Pioneer. They funded Capitech. Curo. Curo. And when you were speaking about classical music and the violin, I, I wanted to touch on how he says when he interviews people, he wants to know if you play team sports. Mm. Doesn't matter if it was a 13, 14, because at least you know what it means to play in a team, mm. that you have your position mm. and what it feels like to win and lose. Mm. And, and that's, you know, those softer things that you'd overlook. Mm. But for coming through, it means so much to me. It was, it was a matter of time, I guess. And luckily it's here, not in Dubai. Sure. Man. But it should be hopefully at some point. Let's people need to know we can sit elsewhere and make it possible. Um, but thank you so much. Your, your car outside is sensational. <laughs> your, your success is sensational. I hope your family is proud of you. I hope your family is not intimidated by you. And if they're going to be watching this, I'm talking to your cousins and aunts and uncles. He's just shown you guys it's possible with the genes. You know, yes, he's a unicorn mm. himself, but it's possible for you guys as well. And, and, People can call you names, bro. But again, you're a Christian at home that prays to a Jesus Christ who was ridiculed and crucified and you're doing the same thing. It kind of doesn't make sense. And your parting shot of um, vote with your end. Vote with your end because every day you're empowering and enriching other communities and sometimes exporting jobs and you wonder why you're unemployed and poor. But it's in every rand that you're spending. And for me... <laughs> And for me, it's also vote with your labor because it's one thing to vote with your hand, mm. but then also be intentional about who you work for because mm. those are those companies that you have to choose where am I spending my money? It's also where am I gonna expend my labor, my creativity, my... But this this chat had to happen and I'm, I'm looking forward to more. Thank you so much for coming through. Before I go, shout out to you for doing this, man. Like you, you, hold, a, you hold a front line of a certain level of interrogation, which is necessary in South Africa. And, and unfortunately for you, you occupy a space where you are a friend to none. Yeah. You would have to if for you to be a critical thinker. Um, and, and, you know, all, all I pray upon you is that you, 
you just remain true to that because you you were called to do it and i think and i think you're a very necessary voice so and thanks for being patient you know i know this took forever dealing with that diva businessman not busy <laughs> today almost didn't happen just for people to know i think you were 10 minutes from cut off uguti as you know for second coach up i was going to join us as well man jalo my chuzi yeah okay no chita stood me up so at least it's all love brother it's all love no vt thanks a lot and i'm looking forward to you shining and succeeding and inspiring more people and hopefully when we sit and discuss silicon cape things like proteges how do we to what you said collaborate with people that have done things right and see if we can bring more talent and spread them to the world so that people can speak of us as mafias and mythical groups like the japanese um and other people around the world who have done amazing things thanks Thank bro. bro cheers <laughs>